How's it going? Andrew here and welcome to another episode of the Creative Endeavor podcast. This is the podcast bringing you inspiring stories from creative professionals from around the world. And in this episode of the Creative Endeavor, I've got a real treat for you. In fact, this is a special edition of the podcast. With whatever is going on in the world right now and the situation that we all find ourselves in, and this is affecting all of us in different ways, I wanted to take this opportunity to reach out to some of the past guests from the Creative Endeavor podcast and get a snapshot for how they're doing and what some of these people are doing in the face of these challenges. What are they focusing on? What are they working on? And how are they going to pivot and move and redirect their focus given this new set of circumstances? So in this podcast, I'm speaking to Thomas Fluharty, Carla Grace, Kelly Foss, and my father, Tom Tischler. Now, I'm not talking to every guest at exactly the same time. I'm speaking to each of them individually, and I've put them all here in this special edition for you. And we're going to have one guest at a time talking about some of the things that they're concerned about, some of the things that they're working on, some of the decisions that they're making creatively, and really what they're focusing on. My goal here as an interviewer, as well as an artist, is to try and bring out some of these stories and bring them to you and really highlight what some of the best creative professionals around the world are doing in the face of this. And hopefully out of this, we feel like we're not alone. We're not facing this challenge in isolation. We're all in this together. So without further ado, let's jump into our first interview with Thomas Fluharty. Now, if you don't know, Thomas Fluharty is an amazing draftsman. He's an incredible artist and his drawing skills are just off the charts. He's been published on the cover of several magazines internationally, from Mad Magazine to Der Spiegel. He's really a man that needs no introduction. So let's jump straight into this podcast, this segment, our first segment of this Creative Endeavor special edition with Thomas Fluharty. Thomas yeah. Fluharty, it's an absolute pleasure to have you back on the podcast. Thanks, Welcome, man. sir. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. It's always awesome talking to you, man. Yeah, you too. Huge fan. I'm a huge fan of yours. Oh, likewise, man. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, um, I, it's great to just have an opportunity to chat and connect. Um, I really wanted to know and, and reach out to you and find out how you're doing over there in South Dakota. How are you, you know, personally as, as an artist and as a creative uh, dealing with this shutdown, lockdown situation. What are some of your thoughts and feelings going into this? And uh, how are you? How are you coping over there? What are you talking about? Something going on? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. No, no, I'm doing. I'm doing actually. Uh, I, I'm doing well. It's just such an uncertain time, you know. Like, yeah. uh, you know, we just moved into this house not too long ago, uh, back in October, and the world was happening and functioning, and everything worked and. And, you know, like, you know, once once COVID came over here, it's just like everything shut down and and that, that just flips everybody out. So, you know, I uh, I have uh, I had a list of things to do before this happened, you know, so um, it just messes with everything. It messes with your brain. Things stop and things aren't as sure as they were. And um, uh, so I you know, I building my studio and putting it together just to make it functioning, you know, to make it function. And so I can't like stop because of fear and say, no, uh, you know, there, there isn't a lot of amount of money that I have to put into this to make this a functioning space. So I'm, I'm following through with the things that were on my plate in January that were on my plate in December, you know, like, uh, you know, so so those are the things that I, I have to keep moving forward with without being an idiot and just, you know, being dumb. But it definitely messes with everyone. And, and it's just crazy. So we're here. We're good here. You know, my family, my wife and I are good. My daughter is here. I have daughters uh, all over the world. Basically, I have one in Bolivia. She's in she's in a lockdown now. She has a ministry to uh, street kids and in Bolivia and these, you know, that, that's a, uh, that's a huge deal for her. Like, what do I do with these street kids? You know, how do I reach out to them and help them? 
So my other daughters are in Boise. Uh, my one daughter is coming home on Wednesday. And my one daughter, other daughter in Boise is getting ready to get married uh, in June. That wow. is scrapped. So she's probably going to be driving here next week, and we're going to get married here in my backyard. You know, I'm just saying this. Everything is just sort of like, uh, okay. And so it's almost like, how am I functioning? How am I, you know, working through life now? Uh, number one is I'm trying not to swipe left on my phone to see what the, what the headlines are. I don't need I don't need headlines. You know, like I don't need any more fear. I don't need any more ridiculous uh, 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 headlines that change every hour. That, that, that just flips me out. And I've also uh, I obviously deal with fear. Uh, and just the uncertainty of it all. And all of my friends, we're all in the same boat. You know mm. what I mean? And things may not work like they once did. They, they, not, they may not work like, like they once did for quite some time. But, you know, um, it's just this place where we are. So as I am moving through my days, uh, I'm still, no, no one can take my drawing from me and my painting and creating and being an artist, you know? Uh, and um, I have things that I uh, that I make money doing that are online. Thankfully, that uh, I've been online for quite some time making money, but that could change as well. And uh, you know, so but I'm I've got I've just got so many things that I've got to get done that were on my plate from January that uh, are still need to be done. So I have a, a Kickstarter book that I'm. Uh, getting ready that I have to uh, finalize and send to the publisher uh, and, uh, and 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 write pretty much a little bit of a uh, forward or you know uh, some dialogue in that. Uh, I've got to create two schoolism classes that I have and uh, we're tweaking one schoolism class and creating a, a brand new drawing class around the uh, the 901 indigo blue concepts. It's not so much that hey now you can draw with a 901. It's more like, what am I doing? What am I thinking about as I draw? And these are just uh, my, my drawing uh, uh, adventure or journey has just been um, uh, trying to, to draw in a certain way. Hmm. And really, it's the, this drawing has cap captured me. It's really, it's really just grabbed me. And I want to be a great painter at some point. I want to really understand painting, but that requires repetition and studying with great people. So I'm already doing that. Mm -hmm. But the main things are I've got, I've got a few things on my plate that I've got to get out and I've got to stay focused so I can't read the headlines. I can't figure out what's going on. I just need to come in at the end of the day, check out what's going on <clears throat> and move forward and try to retain my sanity. And, and, you know, so it's just that kind of a thing where we're all in the same boat and it's, uh, uh, there are things that I have to, pay attention to and, and literally I've written them down as well I've just when we write things down and they're staring at us if it's on a chalkboard or whatever it's we know that's that's the focus you know what I'm saying like that's what I have to get done I got to right. get four things done <clears throat> and as much as I would like to draw Joe Exotic Tiger King right now the number one show on Netflix I can't you know what I mean like I just and I'm drawing, I'm doing a commission right now for someone. I've got another commission that somebody, uh, the, of their dog that died. So <clears throat> these are cool things, and I'm very grateful for them. You know what I mean? And I think this thing has really caused artists everywhere to really be very thankful. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the work that we get to do. Because yeah. we may not, we may not uh, be able to do it for a while. But like I said, it's in our back pocket. It's our equity. Nobody's taking it from us. Uh, COVID isn't going to take it from you unless it wipes you out and your memory skills are messed up or whatever. But more than likely, if we can't do this for some time, we'll have to go work and do the jobs that might we might have to do to survive. You know, if everybody lives in my basement and we all commune together, you know, and we 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 help everyone get their lives back, this will come back. I really do believe it. Yeah. You know so what I mean? You're, you're optimistic. I am optimistic, but I'm also, I also hold it with an open hand knowing that it could just, I have to trust God basically. It just has to be like, God, 
whatever, whatever you do in this world to get people's attention or whatever, whatever people's worldview is. Some people are atheists some, and they're good friends of mine. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I, we have a worldview based off of who we are and what we've experienced. Yes. And this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where your, your view of the world, what you believe, what you trust in is really tested. You know, like, what do I really believe? Do I really believe this? Was I raised this way? Was I this or was I that? Do I really believe that? So all these, these support systems that we have in our lives that we just have leaned on, um, we're going to see if they work. You know what I mean? And that's a great thing, but it's really nerve wracking. And, and, uh, I, I have fear on any given day and at any given moment, but it hasn't crippled me, thankfully. And I'm ultimately uh, uh, just trusting, you know, trusting that um, I know that God is good. And I know that, uh, you know, when I became a, a believer uh, 36 years ago and I came out of incredible drugs and darkness, that uh, I was changed as, an, as a human being. And I started loving God and loving human beings. So, you know, loving people, I was I wasn't. I wasn't so self-consumed anymore. And that, that miracle that happened in my life and drugs and everything dropping out uh, is, is the backbone. It's the reality of my life because people weren't saying good things about me prior to being a Christian. I was an idiot. I was a complete butthole. You know, I was yeah. really an idiot. So anyway, I'm just saying all that to say it's, it's a shakedown. Like, okay, let's, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. Help each other. You know, we're yeah. all in it together. We you know what I mean? Yeah, we are. I, 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 I'm glad you mentioned that, though. I'm glad you brought that into the conversation. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm a newbie at this stuff. Yeah, uh, right. I, I've, my, my walk has been about four months now. Uh, very awesome. new for me, very fresh. But the one thing yeah. I will say is that I do feel this, you know, despite everything that's happening in the world, again, right it's out of my control, entirely yeah. out of my control. So what I'm doing yeah. is just focusing on the things that I can control on, uh, I can control right. and, and can, that are yeah. within my wheelhouse and just going, okay, I'm going to put my focus right there. Yeah. And I'm also going to, to just trust. Uh, yeah. and I, right. I don't have a better word. And, and I, I'm sorry if this offends people, yeah. but trust God. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah. a fellow right. believer. Right. So it, it really, right. Um, right it's something that um, I, I, it, I personally feel it does help me get through. It really does. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I think we have to respect whatever people believe. Like, sure. it, you know, so some, some people don't need, don't need God. They don't want God. They don't, and whatever. That's, that's cool. I'll love on that. But they're my buddies. Like, I don't sure. care. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, I don't care. What, what, what am I going to do? We're in this together, regardless Absolutely. of our worldview and our, and our belief system, Absolutely. you know, and, 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 and what or who we believe in. So yeah. it, it's like, I mean, really, it's it's love God and love others. And really, the big deal for me is loving on those around us, really. I mean, loving loving on my girls, you know, loving on my buddies and my friends and really being there for them, you know, reaching out to them. And, uh, yeah, man. you know, it's yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's I mean, you look in, in one sense, you think of the of the of the of the sadness of World War Two with people show, uh, arriving at Auschwitz in a train and opening up the door and standing in line for an incinerator. I mean, what the heck? How, how, you know, what, I might not be able to, uh, I might come to the end of my money. Uh, th that's my big deal. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like these people were seriously yeah. in, yeah. I mean, mentally how, and they, and, and some thousands made it through that. How, how do you make it through that? And then they got their lives back. I mean, if you ever watch uh, The Pianist uh, hmm. with, um, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Adrian um, Brody. Oh, my gosh. That movie is insane. Yeah. yeah. So he was a musician. He's, mm -hmm. a, he's an artist, you know. He's a musician. Mm -hmm. And what he went through and then how he got his life back at the very, at, when all was said and done. It, 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 what keeps coming back into my mind is, you know, like uh, you've seen these things like Mount St. Helens blew up and it just, uh, it, it, when I was a kid, it just freaking knocked the whole third off of this mountain and everything was just leveled and gray. And uh, 
couple years later, there's this green sprout that just pops through the gray, you know, and it just grows and it turned green eventually. Like hmm. I've been thinking about that, like, okay, whatever, whatever happens, I'm not, I can't go sit in the corner and suck my thumb. I've got to think clearly, like, what do I have to do? What is on my plate to do that is necessary? And there are things I can do every single day, you know? And so if I have to go do a job that, that I'm not really wired for and whatever, I come home and then I draw. Nobody can stop me from drawing. I can draw on my lunch hour if I get one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying, who knows? But it's just like, okay, all right. I want to just be clear minded in all of this, you know, it's fascinating as well. Like just going back to what you were saying before, um, this has made me personally, but I notice it's done this to so many people and just the little community that I live in. Many people might, might not know, but it's, um, there's, there's only about 485 people in the town where I live. So very, <laughs> very small little town. And we're all getting to know each other now through this pretty awesome. pretty fast. And so we're going That's on a awesome. walk and I'm seeing that other people wow. are outside their houses in their yards wow. or just, yeah. you know, kind of they're also walking the dog or something. Yeah. And and we're all we're all coming together and just and even though we got that safe distancing thing, you can't go and give yeah. somebody a high five or a hug or whatever, yeah. but you're checking yeah, yeah. in on them saying, Hey, how right. are you guys doing? You all right? right. Excellent. You right. doing okay, perfect, perfect. Well, nice to see yeah. you. I'm Andrew, by the way. Yeah, I've been here two yeah, and a half yeah. years, you know. <laughs> and so it's You came it, out of your quarantine, man. Uh, you know? Yeah, I should be in quarantine, but it, you <laughs> no, know. you've been in, artists are in quarantine already. Like <laughs> we're just it, in man. our studio all the time. Like yeah. you finally came out and met someone. You know? Yeah, it's funny. My father had the same response that you had. He's like, "What? What? What? What, iso what crisis? What isolation?" He said, "I've been in self isolation for thirty five years." You know, <laughs> <laughs> is he so, an artist as well? Oh man, yeah, he is. He is. He's um, he's yeah, he's a sculptor. And um, he's one of these dudes like you, Thomas. I mean, his name's Thomas as well, actually, funnily wow. enough. Uh, but he's he's one of these guys that is just absolutely obsessed, totally obsessed. Wow. And and, and does it every day. And it's just, wow. he's dialed in, you know. So... Let, let, let me ask you, let's, um, let's kind of jump tracks here. Cause I, and, and again, um, this is something that I've asked a few artists now at this time, because again, it is, it is uncertain, but I'm kind of interested to kind of get your, your point of view and your feel for, yeah. for things moving yeah. forward. How do you think this is going to change things for you in terms of your art business? How is it going to change things in terms of where you're putting your priorities, your time? Do you think you're going to make any shifts over the next little while? Or are you still waiting to see how things pan? out here yeah first of all i've been thinking like what happens when you look back at this 10 years later and you see how you responded and what your answer was yeah i don't want to appear like an absolute idiot you know <laughs> like oh well what i'm gonna do is like sure that's stupidest thing i could do sure uh first of all i have absolutely zero clue how this is going to affect me i have zero clue i have zero clue about anything and i don't have a better answer than that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't change, it doesn't change my desire to create. Like, like honestly, I, I don't want to do the three or four things that are on my plate because I just want to create every day. Does that make sense? Like, I would love to create only what I want to create. But that's I have I have other cool things to do. But then there are cooler things to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that w w what I'm saying by that is is uh, sometimes there's cool things that you make money doing, or they're going to make money in art, and that's that's my job. That's cool. But then there are things I really want. Like I just want to go out and landscape. I want to plein air paint. I just want to go do some studies. You know, but I can't right now because I've got five things that I got to do. You know what sure. I'm saying? So, and those are art related, so they're cool. And, or I wanna just draw something as opposed to doing a, uh, something that's gonna make me money. So anyways, I'm just saying it's just this, it's this weird place where I think what, the only thing I think is possibly safe to say is that it, it's gonna make us hopefully more thankful. You know, when like, especially imagine going to a concert all of a sudden and, and, and you know, you're all in this room together and you're realizing and you're, you're all breathing the same air and 
and there's a gathering again. Like that's that's going to be crazy. I said it's sort of like the little munchkins coming out from when the when the house landed, and all of them are behind the bushes, and it's always like you can come out now. And they're like, <laughs> you know, they're all like <laughs> making noises and and they're coming out of the out of the bushes and they're like, you know, it's color. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. th those are the things that uh, I think can really change for us. You know, the other thing that I've, I'm thinking about is the importance of being online. And so especially if uh, my artist friends are not online, they need to really be getting online. They really need to have a store and they need to see the viability that that's to me, that's basically it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, creating, going to life drawing class, painting, studying with great people, uh, galleries and, and selling your original artwork. Absolutely. But also online as well, yes. you know, yeah. be it teaching, um, you know, figure out a way to monetize your art online. And that's all I really know. And I, I am online, thankfully, but I'm, I'm, I'm studying YouTube right now. Uh, you've been an amazing help there. I'm studying, uh, I'm looking up some YouTubers that uh, I think are really legit and cool uh, and good. And uh, I'm taking notes and I'm breaking down uh, their videos. If they're 16 minutes, I break them into little frames and, and, all, and, and look at what they're doing sequentially. So I'm, I'm a storyboard artist for 35 years. So I, I did storyboards for that long, 35 years. So I get sequential imagery, uh, but I, I still have to learn uh, thinking as a movie, thinking as, you know, uh, sequentially uh, with uh, a YouTube uh, channel. So what I don't think I want to do on my YouTube channel is I'm not trying to pitch this, by the way, but I kind of am. Uh, sorry. Go for uh, it. Please. No, it's, please. It's like... It's like this is this is my next step. But this is logically uh, not just because oh man, COVID's here. I gotta do something. This is like like I was already moving this direction anyways. Uh, sure. And I'm getting ready to record my new schoolism class. So I'm 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 looking at my recording equipment. I have boom stands and stuff like that, boom mics. But all that to say is I'm studying that because I'm gonna go on uh, YouTube and start engaging. And um, and just and I've got to, I'm figuring out what what exactly am I going to be doing on YouTube? Am I am I going to create beautiful little shorts like you did one where you went to the hardware store? It was so cool, and you showed us around your studio. It was like 26 minutes. That was incredible. And you have editing and music and all that stuff. And then when you watch James Gurney, he 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 comes on. He says what he's going to do, and then his little um, his little like uh, logo pops in and spins around and stays, and then it disappears, and then he's like. Bam, he's on scene and he draws, right? Yeah. So that's probably more me. Sure. But because I am sort of animated, I do have to engage just who I am as well. Absolutely. I'm not just yeah. gonna have it be whatever. But those are those are the things that have to occupy my mind because if I suck my thumb in a corner and cry like a little girly, that I, that's that's stupid. Like I can I can think. I can think about these things before I have to go get a job that is completely foreign. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So I'm Thomas, gonna exhaust yeah. I'm gonna exhaust that first. So yeah. anyways, going online is key. And it's it's just it's part of my thinking way before this came into being as well. You know? Well I, I we were talking about this actually in our last in our podcast interview that we did several months ago now. So yeah, I, I, I do think that is key. You've got to just keep going in the face of it and, and carry on. But, yeah. uh, you know, for me, that said, maybe there has been a little bit of sucking my thumb in, in the corner. But but <laughs> if I'm honest, but uh, but what, what I found is is that um, this is kind of a, another one of those wake up calls. But I, 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 but at the same time, it's not that I knew this was going to happen. I just knew something Absolutely at not. some point was yeah, going to happen. Because right. uh, right. I, I, I mean, I lost my business uh, once yeah. already, right. uh, and it's, it's. Yeah. I, I'm only right. young still, I guess. Right. But, but it was, yeah. it was, you know, a, a few years into my career, and again, yeah. something external outside of my control yeah. happened, right. Right. and, and right. I lost it. And so yeah. I've been thinking right. for some time. Hey, it happened that once. It could right. happen again. 
Right. And whether it's like the, the corona or the economic fallout from the, the right. coronavirus, Absolutely. you know, right. it, it, it something might happen. So it does make good sense, I think, to have some sort of diversification. I love what you said as well about exhausting this thing as well. Like you've yeah. got options. And, and even if right. you think you don't have options, right. there's something you're not considering and there's something else yeah. you could be doing to push yeah. this even harder. And, and yeah. it's kind of like just getting in the ring and, and just keep swinging, just keep swinging, right. you know? Right, right. You know, you know, uh, I've been thinking about this quote. I've seen it a lot. Mm. Um, and it's, and, and it, so you lost your business, right? Yeah. But now you have a perspective now that you're in the new possible loss. And Glad I that, lost it. That perspective yeah. is helpful. It's, and so it says, uh, there's this quote that I've been thinking about. It says, a lot of things broke my heart, but they fixed my vision. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's cool. Like, mm. this could really break our hearts of where our affections are, what we love. But they'll fix our vision. Yes. And uh, another thing that I was thinking about and I thought about, you know, our talk here was uh, there's a verse that says uh, where your treasure is, that's where your heart, that's where you find your heart. And a friend, so, so where your treasure is, that's where you find your heart. And my friend actually rephrased it, uh, and it says, uh, he says, pleasure is the measure of your treasure. So all that means is if you find out what makes you the most happy and gives you the most joy, if it's art or painting or whatever, that's, that measures your heart. That's where you find your heart. So pleasure measures your treasure. It, 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 it defines and helps you see, where's my heart? Where's my hope? What is it in? And when you say, what do I love the most? That's pretty much where your heart is. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. So this whole idea of, of having everything stop and not work, and, and it may not work at all online either for quite some time. That's fine. But at the end of the day, you look at, you look at the world and you say, people have bounced back from way worse. And... I love the fact that people are serving each other and loving on each other and helping each other. We don't know, we don't know how good people can be until we see how bad things can be. And I'm, I'm amazed at how cool people are, are being to one another. Like, you know, um, Mike Mignola's uh, wife is uh, making these masks for all these people, you know, like, and she, I don't know if she's a seamstress or whatever, but you know what I mean? Like, it is so cool to see that people are serving and going out of their way to help. And so um, all of those things help us and they help our, our focus to get uh, uh, on the right things, maybe. You know what I mean? Because I'll tell you, when money's coming in and you're cranking it and you're moving, you are very distracted. And... Uh, I, I've been I've been very very busy in the last number of years for sure, and just I, I don't have time for anything else but making money. And bam, you know what I mean? Like you get really distracted, you start drifting. So once the once the flow stops, it causes like a reality check of wait, oh yeah, you're there, you're there. You know what I mean? And these are things everybody knows. I'm saying these are things I'm I'm thinking about. That that is so true. That is so true. When when the going's good and when the sun's shining and you're out there, you know, you you just these things aren't even a thought. And this is really what what causes us to check back in. I, I totally get yeah. it. I totally get yeah. what you're saying. Um, and I I think, you know, my my wife and I and I, I probably have mentioned this on the podcast. Maybe even in this episode, I, I would have mentioned this. But my wife and I have this this little thing where when we feel we're getting really off track. We, we come back and we just go, okay, right now, give me five things you're grateful for. And right. those are always things on that list are always things that, awesome. that, that aren't the result of success or things that money cannot buy. Right. And it's right, normally, right. you know, first, well, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you too. Yeah. You know, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Sure, the, sure. these are things that are just, um, yeah. they make life really worth it. But it's often the yeah. things that, yeah, are, aren't the product of what I've been so busy trying to make, you know, and trying to yeah. create it. More success, right, getting yeah, right. out there, more people, more, yeah. you know, right. it's right like <laughs> sometimes that, that ain't what it's about. Right, right. I, I think, I mean, if you really look at character, how does somebody be, who, who do you love, right? Mm. You, you love the people that really have 
uh, normally, okay, I'm just th th throwing this out. Not if somebody really has been down to the bottom and they come up and they survive, you marvel at that person. I have a friend, his wife left him, his kid jumped off of a balcony on a drug induced stupor. Um, his business, he owed a million dollars and he uh, got cancer of the throat in a month, all in a month. He made it through it, and it's now 10 years post. It's maybe 15. Unreal, unreal. So I love this guy. Like, I want to I talk to this guy. You know, so it's almost like the successful person that never has any trials, uh, sometimes they're arrogant. But the person that's broken is gracious, should be, should be gracious, generous, merciful, sure. because they've been there. They've been broken. You know, they've been down and um, they're aware. They're, they're aware of fallenness and weakness and brokenness. And so I think that that's very well what this could be, is that hopefully we could become more aware of well, it's already happening. Truck drivers, uh, nurses. Uh, grocery store clerks, you know, people stocking shelves. Uh, th these are these are people that anybody could possibly do those jobs, or so it seems, you know. And these are people now that are the heroes. I'm saying I, I think that's cool. I'm not belittling them and saying they don't matter. I'm saying as a as a society, we don't value teachers, we don't value truck drivers. We just like, I hey, truck driver, get out of here. You just fly by him, you know what I mean? But this guy's like working his butt off. So I'm saying, now I'm seeing that people are really paying attention to these things and like, wow, look at this. this these guys are amazing. And they are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just shining a spotlight on these places that have just been in the dark too long. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, look, Tom Brady throws a touchdown. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, you know, these guys are rock stars. Uh, Derek Jeter has a billion dollar mansion and we and we follow these guys. But who's following the truck driver? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like who's following the uh, uh, the teacher? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe that maybe they're a, um, you know, a really good metaphor for for us, you know, so so for so long, like people in general have felt like they have been unnoticed and, and kind of fallen by the wayside. We have the tendency in society to look up at these people that culture is pushing into our faces, like celebrities right. and all of that. Yeah. But maybe right, this right. is a chance for us to kind of look at each other and go, hang on a second. You know, we're, we are it. We are. And, and again, you know, it's like, you're the truck driver. I'm the truck driver. We're, you know, it, we're, we're the, that person in that position, because I, I guess when you're, when you're walking down the street and you start talking to just people, just everyday people, it's now suddenly yeah. there's just this genuine mm -hmm. spark, this genuine exchange and love mm -hmm. and care because you yeah. recognize in somebody else immediately, yeah. hang on a second, yeah. that, that also is somebody important. That is yeah. that is a human being right there. That's somebody's yeah. mother, somebody's daughter, yeah. somebody's father, someone's brother, someone's husband, someone's wife. Yeah. You know? That's right. a child. That's that is yeah. that's somebody right there that is worthy of love, worthy of respect. Right. And I'm going to give them a little bit of time, to talk to them, make sure they're doing okay. Yeah. That's um, oh, it's such, exactly. Yeah, it's such an interesting time, man. Such an interesting time. Maybe it's a wake up call we needed. Yeah, and and you know, if we're what you do is you see them and you say hi, and then you say, hey, how are you doing? Because you realize we're all in the same trial. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, before this would be like, uh, I have a trial. I can't pay for whatever. I have a business and it's going under. No one, no one but a businessman really gets that, right? Like, wow, you had how many employees? A hundred and your company went bankrupt because the internet just it was invented by Al Gore, let's say, as a joke, right? But like, it's like things things get ruined because of technology and all of a sudden this guy that was making VHS tapes and he was cranking in the money now his whole industry's done and he has no money i'm saying only businessmen can identify with that now everyone can identify so if my my neighbor uh, owns a restaurant a bar and it's like he just moved into his new house and now he's not working he's no one's in the bar and it's like now i'm like dude i'm in the same i, I don't own a bar but my money's threatened. My job is threatened. What 
how, how are you getting through this? You know what I mean? Like where we're all in the same yeah. trial, really. That, yeah. And that's what I think it's not so much that we're just paying attention to people, but it's got our attention where we're like, we realize we're all freaking out in the sense that we all feel this. You know, we all, unless you have a billion dollars, but then you're feeling it in a way because you just lost a lot of money. Well, think you, you, think if you've you know got I mean? a if you've got a billion dollars, and and I, I've had the 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 ha, uh, if I could say it like this, the fortune of of meeting some really wealthy individuals yeah. in my time, you know, right. rubbing shoulders right. with people and artists and residencies, yeah. people have got yeah. so much dang money. Um, right. That was interesting, and I wonder yeah. right now because I'm yeah. thinking, where are they going to go out to eat now? Where, what yeah. what yeah. what opera are they going to go and yeah. and, and yeah. listen to? And they've shut yeah. down air travel unless they had a private yeah. jet. But maybe yeah. maybe the pilot is not in their little bubble, so they're yeah. not right. <laughs> they're not able right. to go anywhere. Right. So they're stuck in these yeah. big mansions, yeah. and they're just like, oh dang it, I ran out yeah. of Cubans. I ran out of Cuban yeah. cigars. <laughs> what am I what am I going to do? You know, it's <laughs> I don't know, man. I I think yeah, this is the great leveler. But, but here's the thing though, too, to add on top of what you're saying sure. is I, I feel like I feel like we should be a little more gracious towards those people as well, the, the billionaires, because they're in a trial. Sure. They're not like just immune because they have millions of dollars. They're freaking out as well. Oh yeah, man. So yeah, yeah. they could last for whatever for the rest of till they die, right? Yeah. But they are feeling this. They are oh. worried. They are like experiencing like Oh my gosh, what what is going on? And so they're not immune. They actually, I mean, having a lot of money uh, is is not. I don't think it's that amazing that you you have problems and trials that I don't. I'll never understand. You know what I mean? So so they have a whole set of trials we don't even get. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it's like we are all in in this seriously. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you know it's it's funny. I. Um... Just on a complete side note, that just popped into my head. I got a buddy of mine who lives a few doors down here, and um, his his friend, and I've got a few friends in Queenstown as well. But uh, they were uh, they were saying that um, there there's a private jet lounge in Queenstown, so just two hours <laughs> down. That uh, so we're down here in the bottom of the South Island of New Zealand. And they were saying, Andrew, it was like rush hour traffic, man. The private planes pouring in wow. here. From Seriously. the United States, from all over the world, the private jets landing in Queenstown Seriously. the day before New Zealand just went and just locked really? down. And he said, man, yeah. you should have seen it. They were coming in from everywhere and they all got their mansions down here. You know, wow. not not in the town where I am. Like yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're slumming it here in, in little old yeah. Lawrence. Nice town. Yeah, I, actually, yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, but awesome. but over there, over there in, in like this little mountain redoubt, it's like yeah. just it it is heaving now with the uh wow. with some elites. <laughs> wow. You you need to capitalize on that. Uh you know, be the people have money and I mean yeah. when things change or die down where you know, you're you know what I mean people and I think you have your 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 gallery where on a on a main street where people drive by, right? Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. you you in a, a very smart uh you know well, you wisely we, put it in a in a wise place. We we had we had a really healthy traffic going through, you know, from tourism. There's yeah. about a million and a half to two million cars on the road uh, every year uh -huh. going past, and it's on the main uh -huh. highway. And uh -huh. um, you know, gallery in the front, my studio's That's in the back. Insane. It's it's a wonderful yeah, place to that. work. That was crazy, dude. But um, you know, it, it's it, it's interesting though. Now I, I'm looking at this, going, okay, well, the landscape no pun intended, it has changed. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the economic totally. landscape will change. So I'm thinking, where do the opportunities, where where are they? And so th this is where, again, getting back to what we're talking about in terms of diversification and having multiple you know, streams. I, I too have had lots of people kind of reach out to me and I've been talking to other yeah. people as well. And it's just like, man, you, you got, you've got to find some sort of way of getting online and, and having yeah. some presence out there as a way to kind of just buffer this, to, to, to kind of level this out. Mm -hmm. Because what I found yeah. with, with the, the 
sales, the art market in terms of selling originals to, to individuals, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. market's really volatile. It, you, yeah. you're, you're two or three paintings away from living like a king or two or yeah. three commissions yeah. dropping through where you're now a yeah. pauper again. And it's, it's just oh, yeah. up and down, yeah. up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd been thinking for years, man, there's got to be a better way to this. And, and luckily, I found it before things started getting real crazy. But yeah. now, yeah. I, I don't want people to think that might be listening to this going, well, yeah, OK, easy for you. You, you got this thing set up before st things started to get yeah. you know, squirrely start yes. now. Like the, it's never right. too late. You, you yeah. still, if you've got an internet connection yeah. and you got mm -hmm. the ability to make a video or you've got yeah. the ability to write a blog yeah. post or start right. your own newsletter right. list or right. share right. emails with, you've yeah. got a business and you've got something right. you could build on right now. Yeah. And right. Um, maybe people are feeling the pinch and they might not have those big dollar amounts to spend on a, even if it's like 500 bucks, a thousand bucks to buy your painting. Right. Maybe right. they'll buy a print off you. Maybe they'll right. buy. Absolutely. Maybe instead of a big painting, they'll buy a drawing. You know, or, right. or absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You you know what's interesting? I, and I've said this. I haven't Googled it, but I, ha I I'm aware of it. Uh, if you Google what companies started during the depression, yes. Uh, if you say what company started during World War II, during war. In, in other words, pick a disastrous time. There are famous companies that just launched right when that, when everything went south. And those are companies we all know today that uh, I just don't have them available offhand, but there are companies that started when things went terrible and went south. Uh, there, there are companies that, that, that did succeed. And um, you just have to do a Google search on here it. Here we go. See, How about yeah. this? How about this? Here we go, right here. Uh, here, I've just pulled this up on Google just for now, just now. Yeah. Here yeah. are a number of well-known companies that got started during economic hardship: Procter and Gamble, IBM, General Electric, Dude. General Motors, <laughs> United T Technologies Corporation, FedEx, right Hyatt Corporation, IHOP Total. Corporation. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. That's what what companies thrived during economic depression? Here's another little tab. Uh, okay, so Floyd Bostick Oldham, uh, Oldham, uh, so that seems like investment, uh, Wall Street. Okay, movies, yeah, we've talked about that. Movies and entertainment, Procter and Gamble, yeah, Martin Guitars. Yeah. Oh, I've got a Martin in the other room. Yeah. Brewers, yeah, me too. Brewers, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, I, I'm yeah. thinking if you own a grocery store right now, you're doing great. <laughs> Insane. It's a, I went to a hardware store because I'm buying my paints for my studio and my mm. flooring. Uh, they, they were they were busy, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, right now there are people making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. they, they are. And, and mm -hmm. you know, it, it's that's the way that the, the world works. Yeah. One thing dies, one thing blows up. I mean, people blame the Internet for ruining their business. But this is this is how life works. The Internet is not going away. This is how we live now. And you're like, I, I say this, a newspaper is a. 1890 concept, 18, 1600s with the Heidelberg, with the printing press. So, hey, I have an idea. I need a piece of paper. I need that tree. And I'm going to put some ink on there. And now, wow, look at that. Wow. We, hey, what if we ship this to 300 miles away? Oh, wow. Now all these people have jobs, right? Or even the, even the stable guy that was uh, 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 making... Um, uh, 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 horseshoes. All of a sudden, Henry Ford comes around with a freaking car, puts the stable guy out of business because now he can't make horseshoes anymore like he was, and now his business goes south. Mm. I'm saying this happens all the time. Mm. And so people, the technology replaces an ancient idea. So magazines now have been threatened. Oh, the, oh, 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 the magazines are, you know, everything's going, whatever. This whole idea that I'm going to buy a magazine for $9 to read on a piece of paper that finally got to me three days later that was printed, and I'm going to read that and throw it away? Why would I do that? Why do I need that magazine? It's free right here, right? Subscribe or whatever, right? So I'm saying this, this, this is an ancient idea that's passing away, this paper, you know? But art? is going to exist. People don't want virtual art. People want an original. That's yes. not going to die. 
You know yeah. what I mean? That's not going to die. Kodak was a, a number one traded company in the world, Fortune 500, Kodak. Who ever thought Kodak would go out of business? Hmm. Started in around 1800 something. This is you. That's a that's a Fortune 500 company. Buy that company along with Coke. Yeah, boom. All of a sudden, it's done. Because hmm. in 1984, they were the number one company, and then like what? Uh, they they refused the digital age, and then they went under. You know what I mean? Like fear. I'm losing my job. Whatever. It 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 just. I don't know. There's a um. There's a a line in the Dow. Um, the Dao De Ching, um, which I used to be really like really into, but there's some really great little philosophy in there, and and a lot of people would recognize sounds like a, a, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, you know, things sure. like that. Um, yeah. But there's there's a line in there that talks about um, you know be like the sapling in the wind. You know, because mm -hmm. when the wind blows on it, it bends. Yeah, yeah, right. But don't right. be like the old tree, you know, uh -huh. firm and stiff. Right. Because when the wind right. gets up high, it breaks yeah. and dies. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I, I imagine a lot of these companies and even people just digging in with their roots and like just clawing at the ground, just going, I am not shifting. Yeah. Everything's shifting yeah. around right. me, but I'm going right. to stay here. Right. I'm not going to move yeah. with it. Those are the people that right. end up right. not really making it through. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. I think these these sorts of times encourage us to be light on our feet and kind of move and adapt and change. And you got to bob yeah. and weave with this thing, you know? Right, right. I, yeah, totally. I mean, I don't pride myself as Mr. Entrepreneur by any means, but I study entrepreneurs and I read about, I've read about them, mm -hmm. and I talk with good people who are succeeding. And um, I've just been educating myself, uh, but this could be way over my head and and. Um, at the end of the day, though, at the end of the day, there are things that, that you and I can do if we're taken out of this uh, rhythm of creativity. And, um, you know, there, I think it'll come back. I don't know when or what it looks like, but nobody's taking your, your creativity from you. You know what I mean? Like somebody said this. I read this too. Like, you know, you pay your bills from uh, nine to five and then you, you hustle and you create your future from – uh, six o'clock at night till uh, one o'clock at night. So you could you could go to bed at one o'clock and get up at uh, six. You could do that. You could go go to bed at one twelve thirty and get up at uh, seven, and do your work at nine to five. Come home and and work on your on your side hustle and and your future from seven o'clock at night till twelve o'clock every night. Don't watch Netflix. Don't you know what I mean? Like. You could be you could be creating. You could really be working on it you, because that pushes fear down as well. Creativity, a busy mind, and and really thinking about your future and that you know, are you just gonna sit around or are you really gonna educate yourself and study and learn? And that's what I mean. It keeps going back online, you know. Yeah. yeah. And so this creativity is freeing. It really can be freeing, and nobody's taking that from you. So if you had to go do a job for 12 hours a day that sucked and that you were digging a ditch and you had calluses, you know what? That's, that's just the way it is right now. I'm, just, I'm not saying it's that way today, but I'm saying if that's your worst case scenario, then that's your worst case scenario. I mean, there are people being, you know, just killed. You know what I mean? Back in the day. And so it's like, you know. Well, Thomas, this has been a real treat, an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for being on this special edition of The Creative Endeavor. Awesome, dude. It's great hanging with you, Andrew. Always great talking to you, man. Thank you. Well, I really hope that you've enjoyed that first segment of this special edition podcast. A big thank you to Thomas Fluharty for joining me. Make sure you check out Thomas Fluharty or any of the other artists by clicking those links in the description down below. I've included both their website and Instagram page. Now let's jump over to Adelaide in South Australia and catch up with Carla Grace. Now I spoke to Carla Grace in a recent episode of the Creative Endeavor podcast and she was fascinating, like had so much amazing business information that I for one could apply directly to my art business. So naturally I wanted to reach out to her and find out what are some of the things that she's going to do in terms of her business in the face of some of these new challenges that we're all going to be facing. Now Carla Grace is an amazing wildlife artist. She creates some incredible 
highly detailed, hyper-realistic animal portraits. So let's jump over to South Australia and catch up with Carla. Carla, welcome back to The Creative Endeavor. Hey. And Emily, welcome to the show. It is an absolute pleasure to have you both on. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be here. Last time I was chatting to you, she was in the making. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. Well, it's good. It's good that you you have a co-host. And so, uh, you know, it's it's an interesting time that we're living in. I, and I wanted to reach out to you among, you know, a few other people as well and just hear about how you're doing uh, in the face of and how Emily's doing in the face of all this <laughs> stuff that's happening globally. And as creatives, you know, maybe some of the ways that we can, if I can say, if I dare say, make the most of this time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, some of the biggest brands that we know today were established during really, really hard times just because they they reached out to people in a way that uh, no one else thought to. So even though it is a really hard time, there are still some really positive aspects to it that we can look at from a creative point of view and um, from a community and social point of view and then um, sort of try our best to to go from there. So, uh, yeah, we're doing well. Uh obviously not going out as much. Uh, Emily loved going to the shops, so mm -hmm. we're just not doing that sort of things with her. But working from home, mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of just keep going. Uh, mm -hmm. I put my head down and, and keep working. And I'm starting to reach out a little bit more than what I usually would uh, just because everyone's online a lot more than they used to be. So a lot of people are at home and what do you do when you're at home? There's a lot of browsing happening. So, uh, like live chats and things like that, just making myself more accessible for people, uh, is, is the main focus of what I'm doing. Uh, it's, it's challenging putting yourself out there like that. So I'm not used to hearing my own voice and seeing myself on a screen. Uh, this one loves it. As you can tell, she's just loving every aspect of it. Um, so even though it's uncomfortable to change things the way that we need to, uh, it's there, there are so many different options, uh, so many different ways to go about it. So so to see this this time as, as total despair and what are we going to do? No one's buying stuff. Uh, it's sort of you, you put yourself in a box, I think. Yeah. Um, there's so many people out there doing that at the moment and I get it. Mm -hmm. I understand. And, and don't get me wrong. I have my moments too. Um, yeah. But I, I do think, you know, again, what you're saying that there's something about challenges in these times and putting pressure from the outside, the pressure that is exerted on us and either causes yeah. you to crumble under that pressure or to grow in response to it or go yeah. around it in some way. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been thinking about all the ways that creatives could kind of a, use this time, and B, find a new way to connect with people. Um, yeah. That's tremendous. Because one of the things I found as well is, yeah, people are online, man. So maybe this is a good time to just share your work and get it out there amongst people. Yeah, it's it's a great time to have conversation with people. Um, mm. It's not it's not the best time to like sell original paintings because most mm. the shipping, I mean, there's a bunch of, uh, issues that that go hand in hand with with countries locking down, but it doesn't have to always be about making a quick buck at the same time. I think artists might, or just people in general, because it is a hard time, they think, "How am I going to survive? How am I going to make money?" Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, this is also a time that people connect really deeply because uh, everyone's yeah. going through the same thing. So if you're able to shift your focus and think about how am I actually going to connect with people that are already looking at my work, like maybe not necessarily growing substantially, but just deepening the connections that you have, mm -hmm. uh, then people remember you a lot longer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that you don't want to be a quick buck flash in the pan, uh, especially during the and long term and bigger picture uh, is to just sort of focus on, on sort of reaching people on a more personal level. I think mm -hmm. uh, that could become a main focus and it can take the pressure off yourself as well. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. 
it just you're, you're reminding me of something there there's a there's a local guy i won't mention his name um tremendous guy um has even offered me a, a little bit of mentorship here and there but he's got a massive business it's based in a in a city down here in the south island and previously a lot of the manufacturing that this business was involved in was all overseas and in china so when that yeah. started closing down the ports and all that stuff was was closing up um, he suddenly realized that he was losing vast portions of his mm. business and his company. He turned around and literally said, like, it just went back to the old way when he originally started his business and just started shaking hands with people locally and yeah. rebuilding those connections and just saw the writing on the wall saying, we're going to need this. We're going to need a more personalized approach and, and, a, and, a, and a better connection one-on-one -on -one with people. Mm. And, and I think that is what it's going to come down to, but it's just... It's, I can hear Emily. She's adorable. It's so cute. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. This is all part of it. It makes a better show. Trust me. <laughs> she's looking up at me like, why am I down here? Because she's wriggling so much. So let's say, let's say you're a new artist. You're starting out. You, you mm -hmm. want to get your work out there to the world. More yeah. people are online right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> more, more people are online right now. And yeah. so you're, you're, you're trying to beef up your social media. What do you do? What's the strategy, Carla? Uh, what do you think? It's really hard with social media at the moment because there are so many people online. Everyone's, it's sort of a bottleneck sort of effect now. So uh, creating really good content, it just comes straight back to how it was um, without, you just probably don't promote that you have a bunch of stuff for sale. Because yeah. uh, people will be turned off by that because they're not buying things at the moment. So saying, buy my stuff, it's really good, will automatically, people will just scroll past you. They're, they're not, that's not what people are looking for. Right. People are looking for good content, relatable, someone who is accessible, uh, someone who just loves what they do. They're looking for inspiration. They're looking for things that will give them... <laughs> you know, something to feel good about in their day. So create content that isn't doom and gloom, even though you might feel it like you can be real realistic about it and then say, but hey, this is also what I'm doing. Like this is what's going on. But look at this. This is really cool. Mm. Um, and people can connect with that and you can say you can try it yourself. So creating content that people might be able to do at home. So tutorials, how to's, um, if you've got something that people are really looking to try, creating good footage that people will be able to follow um, and then try at home. So you create a community through what you be able, you're able to post and it all sort of <laughs> will feed back to your main Instagram feed. So also having a good website mm. is also something that um, new artists might not be too aware of like just how good a nice website is where people can come back. It's sort of like if you think of everything feeding back into itself, you want sort of a website is like the gravity to what you're doing. Yeah. So it's where you can post things that people can come back regularly and they know where they can find your central hub because mm. um, a lot of I mean, I've got so many different avenues that I have my work through. There's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, my website, but the website is like everything all in one. So it's like something that people can just, just go straight to the website so we can refer people to. Um, that's also really good. So even though having the social media uh, is, is essential, um, there's also that side of things that really help. Mm. So, so essentially what you're talking about there is, is, you know, di diversification in terms of your presence. Yeah. It, it, do you, okay. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. Do you think that there's anybody out there? Let's just say if you're trying to sell your paintings, because we, we've had this idea for so long, painters got to paint and we've got to sell our paintings, right? Or yeah. if you're a sculptor, you're going to sculpt, you've got to sell your sculptures. Is there anybody out there that's going to be buying during this time? Absolutely. People okay. that have money uh, will still have money regardless of okay. what economic situation is going on. They might have a little less. So instead of buying $100,000 artworks, they mm. might buy 
a $50,000 artwork or a $20,000 artwork. So hmm. people that um, are still able to buy things um, like luxury things. So art is not as exactly an essential no. thing to buy during a recession, hmm. uh, but you're still going to have those, people that have that disposable income that will take advantage of the lack of competition in the buying market and the collecting market. So uh, there are still people that are buying. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just l a smaller percentage possibly. Yeah. 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 What do you think, Emily? Uh, she what? likes what's going on over there. All right. All right. Whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> So, so, okay, that, that, that makes sense because I, I you know, and again, I, I, I've been thinking about this for a while and I've said back in the podcast and, and I might've even given that analogy of your art and business being like a table talk top that, that is, that is uh, supported by many different legs. And if something yeah. comes along and kicks a leg out, if you've just got one thing supporting your lifestyle or your business and say yeah. it's the sale of original paintings this is going yeah. to kick that leg out but uh, yeah. I, I guarantee it mm -hmm. you know um unless you can find a way to hit those people i know of a few artists personally uh, one of them a good friend of mine i think he'll be okay selling original yeah. paintings but yeah. i don't know anybody else mm. um i got a couple of clients still on the line that are that have got you know paintings that they might potentially mm -hmm. reorder but i'm looking at this situation going okay you know, and I think it's interesting when we think back to the Great Recession and Depression back in the, in the 1930s, it's important for people to remember we made it through that, too. Absolutely. And yeah. whilst whilst some things kind of fell by the wayside, there was a shift and, and people still I mean, there were still forms of art that were doing really, really well. One of those was the movies. You know, people yeah. want, still wanted to be entertained. Um, and there's. There was fantastic ways that art could be applied through film and television still mm -hmm. today those industries yeah. will still be in existence so there's ways that we could probably pivot adapt and yeah. change to find a niche or a place for where where we want to go there's one other thing though that i maybe maybe i could um get your opinion on this is the other thing i was thinking about carla was during a time like this when people are struggling Mm. and people have got a lot of time on their hands. Maybe they're in lockdown like I'm in right now. I'm in lockdown. Yeah. Like New Zealand yeah. is shut down, man, tighter than. And I'm here just going, okay, now what? Like I, I yeah. can't leave the house unless you're going to, to go and get, uh, uh, you know, groceries and stuff. I got a studio light here in the corner. I'm going to film, <laughs> some, film some demos. I got some little, uh, I, I, I have a little plaque here to remind me of the good times. Yeah. <laughs> I have got um, I've got some paintings here I'm gonna finish off right you know here, here's a little thing a little on plane air painting so yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm here thinking okay how can I how can I go uh, out you know get away from that that getting bogged down and say okay here I am stuck in my house and turn around shift that focus and going I'm gonna get totally lost in creativity now and just create yeah for the yeah. sake of creation. Maybe there's something to be said for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the lack of distraction is incredible uh, for people that get that procrastinate easily, I guess, people that need that, the, the muting, I guess, of everyday life. Um, but I think at the same time, we can't ignore that for a lot of people, home is not a safe place. So there are people that live in very stressful environments at home that really struggle with, with this lockdown uh, mentally as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think the, the biggest difference between uh, this, this virus, this lockdown um, and pandemics, epidemics that have happened before, we have this incredible outlet online where you can connect with people and you can access things like tutorials, things that give you ideas of what to do during your time that help you to get immersed outside of your world. Whereas before, I mean, what do you do? You lock down, you're in, you're in your home, you've got literally nothing outside of your four walls. So there is a great way to escape. And I think it's important to let yourself do that. 
um, especially when you're not in a happy environment at home. Uh, so I think giving yourself that mental break uh, is almost essential. And a lot of people find that through being creative. Uh, so as artists, having the ability to, to reach really thousands of people through our online channels uh, is not just a way to get people to see our work. It's also a way to give people an escape. And I think we can't ignore that side of it as well. Yeah. So let's say you're an artist with a relatively small following. You want to get out there, share your work with more people. Lots of yeah. people out there right now have got exactly the same idea you've got. Yeah. How do you, how do you, what, what's, what's your strategies for being able to kind of get out there and reach more people? Uh, to just post consistent, good content, yeah. um, doing the live. I mean, I'm in, I'm in the same boat as everyone else. I'm <laughs> thinking, heck, how do I actually stand out when there are so many people jumping online, uh, doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing. So I'm relying very much on the foundation that I've set leading up till now and building off that. But for someone that's starting off, um, I'm not going to lie, it, it is going to be a little bit tough. Um, I probably wouldn't ignore boosting posts. So paying for your... Instagram post, whatever it is on Facebook, Instagram, wherever, just putting five bucks behind it and just boosting it, just reaching, reaching 20 more people um, than what it would have usually gotten, you know? So not being uh, shy of putting a little bit of money behind it, mm -hmm. possibly. Uh, it, it depends sort of what your financial situation is, what you're able to do, but that could also be another avenue to pursue. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to say one thing though about that. Um, so we've got we've got post. <laughs> yes. No. I, I, I forgot all about that, Emily. Thank you. I I, I should have mentioned. Number one, we've got. <laughs> okay. Very important. Number two. Number two oh, was was consistency and and quality consistent post. Well, mm. I, I can I can definitely talk about the consistency because after our first yeah. conversation, which blew my mind and lots of others as well, like there was just so much solid stuff in there that you could just chew on. It was just like, oh, there's so much good business advice here, you know? Um, yeah. So I started doing that thing that we we're talking about of posting frequently and consistently. And I actually saw a massive uptick in the following yeah. that yeah. I got within a very short period of time. Now, the thing that was very difficult for me with scheduling and all that was keeping it consistent. But yeah, for, yeah. for the periods that I was doing that, I thought, okay, no, you know what? I'm getting back into it. I'm going to engage with people because I love it, man. I mean, I love talking to people, <laughs> hearing from people, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, but, but I was seeing a, a massive uptick. So we've got that. So you've got to be consistent. You've got to post. And then you're saying, okay, get a little something out behind you because those social media platforms like your Instagrams and Facebooks, they're going to want to basically put the people that are paying up front. Yeah, right. well, you, you do, you get boosted, um, okay. putting a couple bucks behind your post, even for a day, um, two days, five bucks. It just maybe will show an extra hundred people your post. Mm -hmm. So um, the new algorithm changes. I'm, I'm doing more research on what it is today, but it really is based on interaction. So making sure like I had to turn on, I had for ages, no notifications coming to my phone through Instagram because it was just dominating my time. Um, so I actually had to turn my notifications on for my phone. And whenever I get a message, you just respond, you're just present. You're there. When you get comments, you just respond. Like it's, it's not, it doesn't take up a huge amount of time. Um, obviously it depends on the volume that you're receiving Yep. Uh, but having some, doing something as simple as that as turning on your notifications mm. um, so you're just present uh, mm. helps a lot as well. So it's very much based on, because it is a social platform, uh, so Instagram wants you to, to be social. Uh, Isn't that right, so, Emily? Isn't yeah. that right? <laughs> she loves it. She loves the phone. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So she's responding to your comments? Yes, she is. <laughs> 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 Excellent. No, that's a really good. Um, th that's really good advice. Um, 
there is something about that not letting those things just kind of as I say, down under for the countries that play cricket anyway, not letting those things go through to the keeper, actually yeah, batting back and, and, and actually yeah. yeah, responding really does. Um, it's very easy to lose comments because yes. uh, Instagram on, on the notification center doesn't separate comments from likes and shares and things. So it's very easy to lose comments and which post did they comment on. So right. then you lose track of who's actually asking you questions because if people comment on posts that you did weeks ago mm -hmm. uh it's actually really hard to find that comment so um having things like your notifications on for when you get a comment you you'll see it straight away and you can respond yeah. as soon as you get it that's yeah fantastic fantastic and then that that actually just encourages you to stay with it so okay yeah, yeah. so that that said then how do you stop from being disillusioned discouraged or um somehow you find that 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 social media app starts eating you mentally yeah how do, how do you stop yourself from obsessing over this it's really hard it takes a very strong mindset so you got to go into it with already the mindset that this is not going to control my life so recently i mean my i I'm, I'm a numbers person i watch my analytics daily uh, which posts are performing why when which country etc and you can see your likes and unfollows and who's who's doing what and it's very easy to say oh why like 50 people unfollowed me today for example why did they do that or what am i doing but at the same time it's like it's just you look at the overall and you can work forward with that. It is very hard when when that's your main objective. Let's say you want to get more followers and you see that, oh, that's been a slow in the curve yeah. um, and everything you're doing isn't helping it. Why is that? And then it's very easy to get discouraged. Uh, but just think it's temporary. Uh, every, it's like, it's, like the waves, I don't know, the ocean, you, you'll sometimes get a massive wave of following and then it'll go quiet for a while. And then sometimes then it'll come up again and it'll go quiet a while. So as long as you don't hold on to everything as a permanent resolute, this is what it is now, then you'll go with it. So you just roll with whatever's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the activity on your page is influenced by so much more than just your posts and your comments and whether or not people like you. Yeah. Uh, so think bigger than, than yourself. I think having a big mindset and think in the long term, uh, it's a lot easier to handle disappointments that are happening now. And I think that applies to actually the entire situation that the world's going through at the moment. Okay. Um, yeah. Just think bigger. Um, like it's easy to get stuck with statistics of today um but it's not a it's not a permanent situation yeah. so you're optimistic yes always <laughs> that's brilliant that is absolutely brilliant so uh, then if that's yeah it's 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 great to have that optimism in in the face of what's going on but i can hear that it's not with you it's not you're not talking yourself up into a positive mood you you actually really believe that this is going to turn itself around and you're going to be a standing at the end of it it has to <laughs> yeah yeah it yeah. has to you know it's yeah. um i've never been i think it might also just be my upbringing i mean i've immigrated five times there's always been bankruptcy and there's always I don't, not specifically bankruptcy but we've never been um, we've never had a lot growing up. So I've never really been in a situation where I've had too much to lose, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so I've never had a sense that I'm going to struggle past this. Like if I lose everything now, I'm not going to make it because I've condensed my life down to 30 kilos more than once. I, I have no permanence of things other than the relationships in my life so it's um it's not easy for me to have that outlook but it's something that I've adapted to throughout my life more as a, a survival sense if you don't have doom and gloom now we have to move country because you know all these different reasons 
I'm not going to have any friends over there. It's a totally different world. It's a third world country. Um, it's you, you can just quickly spiral out of control uh, and become a recluse within yourself. Uh, but as soon as you sort of move past that, like, yes, I'm moving to a third world country. I won't have any friends. But when I finish school, I can move back. I can go and do whatever else I want. So when you think past past what you're in without, I don't know, losing sight um, of the bigger picture, then it, it helps. Um, and it does create a positive mentality because it has to get better. I mean, you can't stay in lockdown for years, <laughs> maybe weeks, maybe a few months. Well, here, um, here they're, they're talking that originally it was a month and now yeah. they've extended it another week. Um, my mm -hmm. estimation is it could go up to 12 weeks. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's it, again. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> but and it maybe, is very hard to see past that. Maybe yeah. just the end of the world as we know it. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, for me, um, what what I do with with Rachel constantly is, you know, we turn to each other and we just say, all right, right now, five things you're grateful for. Yeah, and, that's And so we just start rattling things off that we're grateful for. And often mm -hmm. we find that those are the things that money can't buy. They're things that are completely outside of the way we've set up the economy. It's like, oh, well, I'm grateful for you. Oh, well, I'm grateful for you too. It's like, well, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful that, that we get to do this. And, and you know, yeah. We, yeah. And, and it's rarely anything that has anything to do with, with you know economics yeah. or i yeah. made a sale or or i got some more followers exactly. or anything you know it's yeah. a good time to check back in to, absolutely you know, take stock reset you know. your life a little bit yeah and there was also the the other thing that i kind of think about as well again not to get too doom and gloom but there's an artist uh called uh francisco goya and goya was an amazing artist who created a lot of really dark work Mm. through some huge tumultuous like massive societal upheavals and he was creating stuff in response to what was going around around him so as the world is burning down it it created this this body of work that we look at even now and go whoa you know yeah and, and, yeah. and it's kind of like just puts a market maybe this could inspire a new wave of creativity where people can kind of I don't know, make art in in response yeah. to the situation. Absolutely. You know, I've well, seen most, a few people most doing Most historical that. Um, eras throughout art history have been determined by what's been going on globally, and it's mm. created this whole new push of vibrancy through the creative community, yeah. um, especially because art is so fueled by emotive response. Yeah. It's like it's, it's just, it's, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she wants back in the podcast. Let's, she does. Let's, let's get her back in the podcast. She's a bit warm. <laughs> you're back. You're back, Emily. Hey, well done. And that is an adorable t-shirt. I wish the people <laughs> listening to the audio version could see your beautiful <laughs> cherry shirt. Little cherries. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Oh, I lost track of what I was saying now. Um, yeah, so the, we're, the we're, creative power yeah. that that is fueled by hardship especially because mm. hardship encourages community yeah. um, and coming together <coughs> like how often do you offer help to your mate to your elderly elderly neighbors to go to the grocery store like yeah. when else does that happen yeah you're okay yeah and i and i could say as well like it's been interesting just going for walks through town i've talked to more people in town mm. now because i normally i'm just at the studio all day every day no one sees me and it's yeah. like, oh, who are you? You're new in town. I'm like, I've been here two and a half years, you know. But um, it, I'll, I'll let your mum go soon. Don't worry. <laughs> She's like, okay, you know what? You've, you've had enough of talking to this weird guy over on the other side of the world. Well, not really, just on the other side of the pond. <laughs> and I want to go play, mum. This is. <laughs> I'll just let her look at herself through my phone camera and she'll be happy. Oh, gee, start him young. Oh, it's ridiculous. She's just so <laughs> drawn to it. Like it's just on video and she's oh, just like, oh wow. my gosh, <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> that's an adorable baby. Oh, wait, that's me. Loves her reflection. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it just makes people connect in ways yeah. that you wouldn't before. I mean, you suddenly realize that 
oh, your neighbor's got two dogs and hmm. they like to exercise in the morning at 10.30 with the loud music, but that's okay because I'll join in as well, you know? So it's like yeah. you're tolerant. I think you also become more tolerant for people as well oh, yeah. during hardship because there's something to connect. Hmm. Oh, no. Well, Carla, you know, it's um, it's been amazing seeing how you've just, you've kept up the productivity and you've kept up posting awesome work, e- even while you have this little one. Um, <laughs> so what's next for you? What have you got in the works at the moment? What are you looking forward to here? I'm really looking forward to creating some really good tutorials. Uh, everyone's been asking for some fur, some specifically how to paint with acrylic paint, like to make some decent fur. So I'm going to be creating some tutorials that are really good quality, um, that answer people's questions. Um, just short ones, so not big painting, like how to paint an entire snow leopard. I'm just going to be focusing on this is how you paint uh, dense, fur dense brown furs or awesome white or black or you know wet how to get wet texture how to get life and eyes so really specific tutorials that people can just go directly to and get things that they need Mm. um so that's going to be my focus as well as starting a new collection which i've had ideas bouncing around my head for Mm -hmm. um for over a year um all still acrylic painting because now I work in a studio that's in the house and just a spare room. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I can't really work with any solvents or any toxic things. I mean, I never let her put my phone in her mouth, but it's keeping her happy for now. So (laughs) um, I do tend to keep her in in a pretty um, chemical free environment. So it is still going to be acrylic based. I had wanted to work with oils Mm -hmm. going forward, but that's just not going to be possible for our situation at the moment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's what I'll focus on. Um, I don't want to think much past that at this stage because I think things are going to change quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to adapt and see what happens once the virus has done its thing and everyone picks their life up again and we carry on. So we'll see what is left. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And carry on, yeah. Well, Carla, thank you for being on this special edition of The Creative Endeavor. <laughs> Stay positive, keep going, and Thanks, I'm really Andrew. looking forward to following your work with, with continued interest. It's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I should say thanks, Emily. <laughs> thanks for being here, Emily. <laughs> yeah, she loved it. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that segment of this special edition of The Creative Endeavor, and a huge thank you to Carla for joining me. And again, if you want to find her work, her website and Instagram is in the description down below. Now, let's go over to New York City and catch up with a Creative Endeavor favorite, Kelly Foss. Now, Kelly Foss is a classically trained academic, figurative artist, and her skills are just exquisite. I love her paintings and her drawings, and I always get so much out of talking to her. So naturally, I wanted to reach out to her and have her back on for this special edition. So let's jump over to New York City and catch up with Kelly. Kelly, welcome back to The Creative Endeavor. It's a pleasure to have you back on the show for this special edition. How are you doing over there in New York City? We're, we're getting through. We're New York strong. Awesome. That's great to hear. Look, it's wonderful seeing you again and this amazing background that you have behind you. I do want to talk some more about your art and what you've been working on. Um, but first of all, you know, because this is kind of a special edition and we're talking specifically about um, what's happening in the world, what's going on and, and what people are going through, um, I wanted to kind of reach out to some other creatives and hear how people are facing this and what are some of the things that they're doing to kind of get themselves through this situation. Um, I I know this has had an effect on you like like all of us, but um, what's been your experience so far and, and how are you doing over there? Well, I am in, what is it, week three of the quarantine. Um, so I went from teaching in Manhattan, like two to three days a week and just, you know, being used to the New York city buzz of life to suddenly just being in my apartment. I don't have my classes right now, of course. And I'm, I miss my students, but on top of that, just like everyone, I miss the world as it was. Yeah. 
but um, right at the moment I need to be, or I get to be, uh, creating a curriculum for a new class online. And I haven't taught still life drawing online, so I'm getting that curriculum together and uh, every day, like just as you messaged me, I was just wrapping up um, getting to draw a live model online. I didn't oh, wow. think that would ever happen. Yeah, it sounds, I'm like, does this count as drawing from life? <laughs> sure. I think given the cir think current, uh, yeah, given the current circumstances, that absolutely counts. Yeah, I, I don't think I was down with the idea of just how, how weird that sounded, because I'm, you know, I'm the academically trained old school, whatever, where it's like, you need your two eyes with that 3D object. But it presents its own challenges. You don't need to have that. And in this time, having that moment of release with uh, the company that I've taught for for years, now they're doing this online and getting to be a participant. Um, that's been probably like the best parts of my days so far. Wow. Wow. So how, how much time are you dedicating at the moment to your drawing in the, in, in the daytime? Like what, what's, your, what's your time and what's your schedule shifted to now? Um, you know, I've been probably doing a few hours, maybe three to four hours a day of drawing. Um, and then I'm trying to, you know, push better with my online business of just being a professional artist since I don't have, um, you know, the outside world running around to do anymore. I don't really have any excuses. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've always encouraged me to get that YouTube going. <laughs> Gotta get that YouTube so, going. So I'm working on that. <laughs> You'd be happy to hear. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. But, so my days have definitely shifted from, you know, we're all finding our new normal right now. Um, and I'm also allowing myself to be human because three weeks in first week felt unreal. And second week I could tell my subconscious was still trying to give reasons for looking out the window and not seeing anyone and thinking it must just be really early on a Sunday morning. Like mm. I could feel myself thinking that. And it's like, no, it's the afternoon on a weekday. It should be bustling. So I have gone through that shock stage and only week three, I'm definitely giving myself a lot of like human break of just like allowing myself to not be as productive or uh, go getting as maybe my normal, more energetic self would be just having a lot of grace to me. <laughs> Yeah. If that makes sense. No, absolutely it does. Absolutely it does. I think whatever we can do at this moment to, you know, find a mode in which we're we can cope. I think yeah. it's important. And there's only so long I think that you can resist something or fight something before you just have to allow something. Um mm -hmm. and I, I feel what this is for myself personally is I've, I've had to make a distinction between those things that are within my control and I can do something about and those things that are outside my control that I can do nothing about. And whenever I feel anxious or fearful or upset, it's always because I'm fixated on something that exists outside of my control. But the minute mm -hmm. I accept it and just go, you know what, this really sucks, but what can I do? And then it's like, okay, well, I can pick up that paintbrush. I can pick up, you know, the microphone and call Kelly Foss. I can, I can, uh, I can draw a picture. I can do all sorts of things. So these are things that are within my control. But um, it's it's about keeping that focus, I think. Yeah, and I I don't know who said it, um, but it's the philosophy of like when you are mad or sad or upset about anything it means that your head is in the past or in the future and we don't ever get to occupy the past or the future so our, our mind shouldn't be occupying those spaces mm -hmm. like all we have is now and that is a pretty amazing gift and having the gratitude of 
you know, there's a lot of people and it doesn't take much to look that far to see people are having it way harder than I am. Mm -hmm. So allowing myself to be in the now and being grateful for this now, I'm safe, I'm okay. And my art supplies are holding out at the moment. So what can I do to make right now where I'm safe and okay better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad to hear that the art supplies are holding out. And, and so you've got enough well, to be able to uh, to produce more of these amazing figurative pieces like what I'm seeing behind you right now. Oh, no, this? Kelly, Kelly, no. Do you no. see this? I see. That's a two centimeter white chalk pencil. My goodness. And I love this and I'm pretty sure I have more, but um, I guess week three slash four should be about cleaning my apartment so maybe i can find all my hidden art supplies because i'm also finding like hidden gems in my apartment where i'm just like i've got a whole package of watercolor pencils that i haven't even opened like okay let's do this but um my go-to's i'm like this is as i was sharpening these today i'm just like this could be getting rough. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? You know, most people would open the pantry and uh, look inside <laughs> and, and count how many cans of beans they got. And uh, the artist looks at it and goes, I've only got one squeeze left of that tube of cobalt tear. I've only got two centimeters on, on the end of that that uh, white chalk pencil. I, I'm How am I going to get through? You know, prior, priorities, right? <laughs> That's like so sadly like Van Gogh where he's like eating his paint. I'm like, no, no, oh, Kelly, wow. prioritize. But then again, like earlier today, I was looking on Amazon for a chocolate bar. So I didn't do it, but. <laughs> oh, gee. gee. Yeah. I should oh. have been looking for these pencils, actually. Well, I mean, okay. Have they, have they closed down the postal system there in the United States? No. Okay, so that's good. still going on. Good. But everything, well, slowly the states are shutting down everything that's non-essential. Okay. So essential is the uh, restaurants who are doing delivery or pickup. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, the hospitals and law enforcement and transit. Okay. But I'm thinking the producing uh, people who produce the art supplies, mm-hmm. I'm thinking those should be shut down logically yeah Hmm. so here in new hmm. zealand they they've uh we can still get things in we just can't send things out so Mm -hmm. um you know it which is which has been interesting um especially if you're you're producing dvds and shipping those worldwide like we were and so with with, uh, one fell swoop there goes a significant portion of the business but now also i'm no longer able to get materials and art supplies in um which is is that why you were asking me about how to tone your paper yeah okay so so there we go i was looking around because i remember i had bottles of echo line ink and i'm looking at all these beautiful drawings on toned paper and i'm running out of my favorite which is this canford (laughs) dreadnought gray acid-free card that i love to draw on and then i was looking at it going i'm not going to make it with the amount of card that i have left because i i ordered heaps and and it's gone and i'm thinking what can i tone paper with and i've got acrylic paint I've got some, I've got tea and I got coffee. Um, I got different kinds of herbal tea, like black currant tea. So I can get this really cool purple kind of tone. And I was just thinking of experimenting, but I thought who would know about this? So like, Kelly, help me. What can I do here? But yes, yes, essentially. I, I, I was getting all MacGyver on my art supplies here. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. You'll come up with like the best stuff because of it. But I would say be careful of doing like a fruit type tea. Because okay. you don't want any actual like food particles to go into your paper, in my opinion, because okay. there might be something that decays because of that. That's a good good thought. So yeah. I would say stick to flower herbals if you're going to go herbal. Flower herbals. Okay. Okay. This is, wow. Okay. I will do this. I will try. Or and... just stick to black tea. Black tea. <laughs> I don't okay. know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that'll give a really lovely sepia tone to the paper as well. Like if I stretch it. But you never know. 
Yeah. Because it's like people who were like so careful with our oil paintings and then like a conservator will tell you, you know, spit is a really good way to clean your piece. And it's like, okay, <laughs> we're so like white glove service to our work sometimes. So, <laughs> you know, don't listen to me. Try, try blackberry tea, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh gee i just interviewed a an art conservator and uh, he he neglected to tell me about that trick um so have yeah. you not heard of that one no i have not no no i hope it's like a thing and it's not just like an art conservator being a jerk to me being like yeah i just put on your painting <laughs> yeah he's telling his other conservator buddies you know what i told her <laughs> give that oil paint a you know just just a bit, just hawk a loogie right there on that oil paint and just, yeah, she'll be right. They're just laughing and picturing me in my studio. <laughs> that's it. That's it. So, um, so you're, you're doing some drawings. You've managed to find a way to do live drawing, uh, you know, th from, through a screen, which is awesome. I mean, you're, you're, you're using what you got at your fingertips. So what are some of the works then that you've got on, on your, on your desk at the moment that you're going to be chipping away at there in your apartment? Uh, you know, so far I've been very much, of course I was saying like in the now. Yeah. So once that, that, um, that session is over with the model, I will maybe get lost for a few hours, just noodling around on maybe a piece that spoke to me that I created in the session. Mm -hmm. Um, but quite often, and I feel like this is a little bit like my philosophy with all the Prima paintings that I used to do of um, still life of just doing a one and done. Like after I go to sleep, I'm not going to wake back up to it. Something that I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, so far with these pieces that I've been doing in these live model sessions online, they've been uh, all a Prima, just allowing it to be rough doodly expression. Um, but I mean, there's some that are kind of speaking to me that I would, I would like to maybe transform it into a piece, but like right now, I'm not looking that far ahead. I'm very, like I said, in the moment. Yeah. Focused yeah. Mm, for sure. For sure. So, okay. I mean, and that's, that's probably the most important thing, you know, and that's what I'm starting to realize through this is that this is for forcing us to acknowledge something that maybe uh, we've been running from for a while. Um, so for me, for instance, when, when you say that thing about, you know, future and past, that that's where I've lived my life. It's either, you know, oh, what an idiot. I can't believe I did that thing. Or, you know, I'll never make that mistake. And you, you're, you're obsessing with something that happened back there and you're trying to make a decision in the now, which maybe is a, is a good thing, I guess. But, but then you're also anticipating a, f a future event, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but never really focused right here, right now, doing the best thing that you can with what you got. And, and I think that, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest takeaways for me uh, through all of this is just, yeah, go on. Well, it's, it's always been like such a strength I, from the outside looking to you. Um, I think it's such a strength of yours is that you're such a future caster. Like talking to you last time, it was kind of like, oh yeah, you know, this is something I'm planning to do. Oh, and this is a little pet project that I'm thinking of starting. And this is something I've been doing in the background, but it hasn't been released yet. And it was just like you saw so far ahead and that's awesome <laughs> like i need to be more like that right. but just like in this current right now i have to be now sure. um because we don't know what the new normal will be so it's really hard to plan that that's right yeah yeah you're absolutely right i mean it, yeah as, as future driven as i normally am i mean you I don't think any of us can can plan for what's coming. And and I'm look, without knowing, I, I mean I'm trying to be as optimistic as possible and go, okay, yeah. whatever the future is gonna look like, as soon as they open it up again, I'm gonna make sure that I do whatever it takes to stay standing. And mm -hmm. to keep you know, for my own part, I, I hope it makes a difference to people, but to keep, you know, spreading a, a message of hope, you know, and, and, yeah. and just helping people get creative. So that's what I'm passionate about. But yeah, it, it's going to be very interesting for, for you know, original art sales, uh, you know, classes, all that sort of thing. So 
What do you think? I, again, okay, I'm going to get you to, to we're, we're going to step outside of the present moment here, but because I, I, I'm just curious. So what do you think, Kelly, you're going to do when, the, when they suddenly, the lockdown finishes and stuff, what are some of the things that you're going to then be focusing on for your art business? How, is, how do you think this is going to ch- change you? Um, well, immediately I'm thinking, and I didn't know that this was going to be so much a part of my career, but I do miss students like in person immediately. Cause I feel like, like I'm that millennial that doesn't like phone calls because I can't see the person. Um, and I, so much of my conversation takeaway is seeing you sort of thing. So um, I think something that I'll be ready to get out of the, the, I want to say the stocks, meaning like the race, but I don't want to say the stocks because it sounds like the guillotine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be ready to hit the ground running um, that I'll, I would love to get back to having in-person students. Um, but a takeaway, I think, of this is not being able to have excuses anymore about things that um, in my life, even apart from art, it's always, hey, I can't do that right now because I've got so much on my plate. I'm running around. I'm so busy. I've got to go there and here and there and there. Now it's like um, you can't tell somebody on the phone, hey, I've got to run. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, no, you don't. You don't. You can't use that excuse anymore. All you can say is, hey, I don't want to talk anymore. That's all you can say. Like, so anytime, you know, my excuse to you with the starting YouTube, it's like, you know, I'm just so busy. Like I'm running around, I'm doing all these classes. And at this moment, like before my online classes have launched at this moment, I don't have any excuse. Mm -hmm. And then with the paintings where, you know, you have your hopeful future paintings when the time is right, when I've got all my thoughts in line and I've got the model and everything is just perfect, then I'll do this epic piece. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, the time is now. Like, are you ever going to have as much change to your easel effect than this? Like, you know, and at the moment I'm sitting on the ground. (laughs) This has been my comfortable spot to do uh, drawing live with the model. Um, so that takes away the excuse of perfect studio space. Mm -hmm. Um, so the excuse of I'm running, I've got so much on my plate, like so much grabbing at my time. Still, there's so much on my plate, so much grabbing at my time, but I get to be very selective because I'm just here and getting to pick up the calls I want to take, uh, getting to send the emails I want to do. Like, um, I think this is eye opening of how completely in control you can be having all of this completely in your control. It's horribly, uh, terrifying, but at the same time, it can be really empowering. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, it does. And I think what this is causing me to do, because I had the tendency to fixate on this so much, um, and I've been so future-driven and so business-driven myself personally, it's like, if I just get that commission, I'll be happy. If I just get this piece of camera equipment, I'll be able to produce a better video. I'll be happy. If I just do this thing or just tick that box, I'll be happy. And what I'm finding the older I get, the further I go along, it's like, no, you get to make a decision to be happy right now. And if you're focused on the right things and and mm-hmm. that's where our focus should be. I, I think this is a this is really a correction emotionally and spiritually. It's bringing things back to center in in such a way that it's it is forcing us to check back in you know and and so as an artist that that can be a really important thing i'm curious Mm -hmm. though i don't know about you you know but i'm curious about the kind of art that's going to come out of this time and what we're going to be able to look back on as documentation of this event yeah it's crazy um 
I don't know if it's you I was talking to or who, but it was like week one of quarantine. And I said, I think this is going to be looked back upon as a renaissance of uh, people expressing uh, wildly narrative pieces, um, emotional and less correct and more expressive uh, and just more thoughtful works. Like, I, I think especially, I don't want to say pop artists because it's not what I'm meaning, but pe mainstream artists, um, they kind of know what will uh, check the boxes of galleries and the buyers, but when the galleries are closed and the buyers are maybe not like filling up your email account as much as emails from your state or city, I think when you are left alone in the silence of your studio space, there's stuff that's going to come out that maybe you're not painting for applause anymore. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe so this is... I think it'll be, yeah, this Renaissance, I think. Of, of authentic work, like authentic mm -hmm. creation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really dig that. Yeah. So that has made me think, okay, so what is it that I have not been saying that maybe I've been afraid to say or unwilling to say? Because there's also the unwilling to say because of discomfort. Um, and I was I was just thinking the other day, and I was saying this to the the chat room of uh, the artists in the Zoom account doing the session. I said, right now, artists are using art as either an expression or as escapism. It's like it's this input a healing balm or it's this outflow like i was saying it's a lullaby or battle cry and it's like what do you need art to do for you right now because we all need art right now no matter if you qualify yourself as an artist or if you're uh, a librarian or something that never picks up a pencil other than to write who's in trouble <laughs> Now I'm in trouble with the librarians, but everybody needs some sort of expression right now. And is it that you need to say something and this is how you say it? Or is it that you need some sort of healing or escapism? Like for me, it's very much escapism. It's me getting these blessed hours every day where I can really shut off my brain to the sirens that are literally going around New York City streets right now and me focus on something so uh so i don't want to say archaic but so ancient as taking this thing and making a mark mm -hmm. it's like how beautiful and simple is that that we get to just breathe and hold on to a little piece of something that makes something else mm. yeah that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there's something to be said for art therapy, isn't there? I think so. Like, I think we all use it as therapy, whether we are aware of it or not. Hmm. Yeah, I, I certainly I certainly do. And, and again, it's it's an opportunity to check back in with that and uh, and and get back into the the regenerative healing side of, of, you know, what creating a piece of work can do. Um, and again, there's there for myself and, and just speaking for myself, uh, there, there's been too much emphasis on, on a product or a result off the back of, of creating something without actually just getting lost in the moment and just feeling my way through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It must be so weird. Like, again, just back to what you were saying and, and it's sorry to jump around here, but it must be so weird to look out your window and see nobody in the streets. It reminds me of that scene out of Vanilla Sky, like that that really bad Tom Cruise movie from like maybe <laughs> 20 years ago. Um, but oh, it wasn't that bad. It was okay. But he was, there was this scene where he's just running through the streets of a city and it's just dead. It's absolutely dead. And I'm just, uh, I, I'm trying to picture what that must be like right now in a place like New York City. Wow, man. 
Yeah, it's so weird. And like, it, I, I can go to like those darker thoughts of thinking of stuff. And I'm just like, uh, you know, as an introvert and as an artist, I thrive in alone time I can do this like this is the stuff that I choose to do a lot of time and I yeah. view it as like reward of like I did nothing this week um, meaning I've been in the studio and hiding from the world but when that world isn't an option anymore yeah. you're suddenly like oh well you know it would be nice to have a hug and it'd be <laughs> it'll probably be like a many months until that can be possible and then I started thinking of this tv show or movie and I can't remember what it is but they had this hug machine oh wow. and it <laughs> it is from it's from this actual art exhibit that they did yeah. as like a social commentary of how disconnected humans are right and from this art exhibit of like this mattress closing around a person it became like this joke, but then it became a real thing for like seniors and stuff to actually do like this mechanical hug. But on this comedy show, they showed this in the background and they're like this hug machine. And then you see this mattress like thing close around a person and then you hear like some popping and snapping. And they're like, oh no, it's broken. And you just see the person inside go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways. Yeah. That was a very long-winded way of saying we need to find stuff that is funny to us and not watch the news so much. Turn off the damn news, man. Like, yeah, yeah. If there's <laughs> one thing that I can say for this is turn off the news. So this makes me think, do you find yourself maybe in this time more willing to be an artist that is saying something with their art? Very like, interesting. Like, maybe do you want to... Do you want to interject more of your thoughts in a subtle way or yep. maybe in a way that you'll have to explain your piece to be representing your thoughts? Or are you still in a place where just epic beauty is enough? Very, I like, that's so interesting. And I, I'll answer and then I want to fire that one back at you because that's, that's a really good question. But personally, yes, I've thought more and more about um, I've thought more and more about how I can actually say something with my art or maybe not say something. Maybe a better way to put it is explore something. So I've got a painting in my mind of, of a lot of mythological um, subjects, even some biblical subjects, which I'm really fascinated by. Um, but things that have to do with the human condition and some philosophical ideas. Like I've got a painting right now um, that I want to do about the myth of Sisyphus which is, you know, this, this character pushing the boulder up the hill or up the slope to have it tumble back down again and then push it back up again. And it's like this futile circle of, of events which lead nowhere. But, the, the, you know, Sisyphus, I mean, he's, he's caught in the situation where he just keeps pushing, 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 and he'll never get out of that torment. And I think so much of the way we live our lives and so much of the way we, we've been going about things to me, that, that myth of Sisyphus kind of perfectly sums that up. It's like this toil and, and struggle and ultimately going nowhere. And I, I try to watch out for this in myself, but I, I kind of, I, I wonder about that. And so I'm thinking about things like that with my art, but it's not so much, I don't want to be overt with those sorts of things, but more kind of explore it for myself, think of a way I can communicate that visually and just put it out there and see if people will either pick up on it, enjoy it or whatever. But I, I'm thinking also like I really want to get into and dive deep into sort of some of the stuff like the, the, like the type of art that you produce. Like I'm not classically trained. I've just been fumbling around in the dark and I found techniques that work for me and I've just really been pushing hard at it. But mm -hmm. I, I, I would love to explore a more classical approach to painting figures and portraits, for instance, um, mm -hmm. and, and landscapes as well. But to me, yeah. I, and, and again, I haven't really explored this territory on the podcast before, and I don't know if people you know, know this about me, but, but I, I'm a... I wouldn't consider myself religious, but, but I am Christian. But with that, like I, I, I look at the world through that particular lens and I, I kind of see 
a, a figure like God as being sovereign and in control of, of everything that's going on. And it's either being allowed to happen or, you know, being directed in some way. And I don't know. So mm -hmm. a, a big part of me wants to explore some of those themes as well within my work. And it's, um, I don't know, it's just such an interesting time to be alive. And it's just so interesting to try and draw upon this stuff. I think what it's going to do for me even if it is a pretty landscape or an epic scene or a portrait, I might try to inject a little bit more of that in into what I'm mm -hmm. doing, you know, and uh, and try and draw a bit more out of that. So it's, yeah, I, I don't know. So I, let, let me throw it back at you. I mean, how about you? Well, like, I love that answer because when, especially young artists ask me advice, don't ask me why anyone's asking me <laughs> advice. But when they ask me advice on their careers, I always say, um, you find the you of you and lean into that with your art. Um, so that's exactly what you're going through of how can I imprint more of my DNA onto each piece? Because your thoughts are just as much of your eyesight and your heart as these other works. And it's like, why not? inject that and this is kind of the reason why i have such a good response to nora rockwell's work because he was injecting so much of what his thoughts maybe his dreams onto his canvases and uh when i first was deciding to get into the academic world it was through the frustration that i couldn't have a narrative easily created with a piece because I didn't have the ability to be representational like I wanted to be, uh, which gave me the most satisfaction in my creation. And um, yeah, through even biblical stories, like reading stuff, like Old Testament stuff, I'm like, this is epic. And I, it's only for me to imagine because no one, I mean, other than Charlton Heston, like we're maybe not knowing, uh, picturing these faces on these stories of these amazing people. And that is actually why I started studying Hebrew because I wanted, I thought it was such a beautiful written language and I wanted to be able to incorporate that into my biblical paintings. Wow. So uh, like when I was going through the academic years and doing these like large <laughs> nudes, I had in my mind of like, okay, this is very Ruth like, and then having that feeling suddenly there was like a tiredness or just that character's expressions. It was more easily able to inter interject into it. So, um, and then I love to hear that you have like some sort of like fantasy type elements maybe into your work of maybe. Uh... Yeah. Mythological anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm fascinated with, with mythology and I'm fascinated with, with, uh, you know, biblical stories as well. And, and quite a lot of the old Testament, which I just think is just amazing, you know, deep stuff, depending on what level you're reading it on. Um, there's just so much wisdom there. And, and yeah. when I'm going through it and, and reading it, I, I just, I, images just come to my mind and I'm just like, that has to be painted. And, and how could and there's I so much that? words explaining it. It's like the oh. words are there explaining it. Yeah. There, it's like the blueprint is there yes. and your mind is filling it in. Yeah. And the only thing that's missing is for this to put it down on something. Yeah. Do it. I can't wait for that. <laughs> uh, hey, right back at you. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> what else are we going to do? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. So it's like we have so much to do in this time. So yeah. I, I think I was telling you, um, I'm seeing on social media people being like, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm like, How? I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm overwhelmed. My to-do list is massive mm. and 
but it helps us to prioritize in this time because we are in complete control. So I get to say what is the most important thing, but I'm also allowing myself to think, okay, BuzzFeed Unsolved Marathon is the most important thing in my life at this moment because I need some decompression time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll watch something stupid and funny because yeah. I'm allowing myself to be human, but I need to not mistakenly do it as holding my breath, waiting for things to just snap back to normal. Yes. Because who knows what normal is? Who knows when it will come? But we need to like go with the flow and be adaptive and try to be productive. 100%. While still being kind to ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 100%. Kelly, it's been wonderful having this opportunity to, to chat with you again and connect again. And look, I just I wish you all the best in this time. Um, but thank you so much for being on the Creative Endeavor. Thank you for having me back. Like anytime, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> A huge thank you to Kelly Foss for joining me on this special edition of the Creative Endeavor. Find those links to Kelly's amazing artwork in that description down below. Now, last but not least, let's head over to far north Queensland and catch up with Tom Tischler, my father. In fact, he's a real hero of mine. Maybe I'm biased, but I love my dad's work. And in fact, my dad taught me so much when I was coming up in the art industry. He gave me so much valuable business insight when it came to building my art career. And I've always looked up to my father. Now, my dad's a renowned wildlife sculptor and he has work in over 150 zoos and museums across the United States. So let's catch up with Tom, my father, over in far north Queensland. Well, Tom Tischler, dad, welcome to the Creative Endeavor podcast once again. It's a pleasure to have you back on the show. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Listen, um, we've been talking, we've been keeping in touch a bunch over Skype. You know, I always love talking to you, Dad, and uh, we share creative ideas. And we were talking the other day, and I thought that this would be a really good time to share some of this message with people out there about the current situation, the current crisis that the world's facing, and how as artists and creatives, we can go about this and conducting ourselves in such a way where we don't buy into the panic, we maintain our creativity, and we just focus on things that we can control. So I was thinking maybe you could share with me again, some of those things that we we're talking about. Oh, well, some of the things we haven't talked about Let's start with that. Sure. Art, for me, I, I would think for most any serious artist, is a long, lonely process. You're in personal isolation for days, weeks, months, years. You stay in your studio and you are compelled to work on your artwork. Uh, and, and if you're not compelled, well, then you're you're just not putting in the effort and the hours that art requires. So it, I'm I'm recluse anyway. I mean, I I don't I don't want to do anything except work on my art. So for me, it's it doesn't seem to be a a this. Uh, isolation, this imposed isolation because of the current problem, this this is not a terrible hardship on me. This is, you know, I, I, I didn't have plans on doing anything. Can't wait to get back to what I'm working on. And and so I, while, I, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm not, I'm almost embarrassed to say, well, this doesn't bother me at all. This is what I do every day, all day. So what's new? But I, thinking about that, perhaps some of that same philosophy and, and not being bothered by being locked in would be a help to other people. Perhaps if they had something they could focus on and think about that, that, because we live such hectic lives. Everybody's running around and they've got all these errands and things they've got to do in places. And 
and they just don't have time for creativity and time for themselves, maybe we should be looking at this as a blessing. Maybe we should be looking at this as a, as a gift. You have a gift of some time for yourself. How are you going to use it? Don't squander it. Do something productive. Do something creative. I think it's a, it's a, it's a question of attitude. It's a question of perspective. Make the most out of this situation. So we have the opportunity that, you know, the time has given us to focus on things that we'd really love to be doing anyway. But do you think that there are any other opportunities that are lying in this current situation? Because at the moment, again, I just want to bring it back to, you know, you turn on the news, you're listening to the radio, you're look, looking at the mainstream media and what it's pumping out there. And, and whether, you know, we don't have to get into one view or another on the situation, we have a crisis now that is affecting the world. So is there something that as an artist now, you know, we're looking at markets fluctuate, for instance, we're looking at markets change, this will change things almost overnight. And we're going to wake up, you know, when this is over in a brand new world. Is there any opportunity here that you see for artists either emerging or established artists that they can take advantage of besides extra time that they can dedicate to their work? Well, <clears throat> I think it's definitely is, can be seen as, and actually is an opportunity for you to change your life. Now your life is gonna change anyway. Do you wanna have any control over that change or do you want it to change on its own and not necessarily for the best? So you have an opportunity to take this time and invest it in, your, in yourself, in your family, in the people you're responsible for. How, what can you do to improve yourself during this period of time? I don't think watching Happy Day reruns is going to, to uh, help you. Uh, I, I think that you, you should decide that, that, decide. I think the first step is become really clear about what you would like to do, what you'd like to do, how you'd like to see the rest of your life. The rest, you have a very short, I, I believe it's not going to be that long a period of isolation, you know, but even if it's just a week or two, hey, that's a rare opportunity. Read something, learn something, do something constructive in that period. Hopefully, something instead of just reading a novel, which you read, and that's great at the time, and it will help alleviate your anxiety by getting your mind off your current situation and your perceived problems. Think about doing something that has a longer lasting effect in your life. Learn something, it, and it doesn't matter what. There, everything is, a, you don't have to go outside and you don't have to spend any money. Everything's available on the internet. And as far as the television's concerned, I don't turn the television on, full stop. I have not, the television has not come on once since well before this crisis. Well before the, that television hasn't turned on since the first of the year, I'm sure. And that's because I don't like what they say. It doesn't matter what the source is. I'm sorry. It's all bullshit. And I don't need that kind of disruption and intentional creation of anxiety in my life. Now, I, get, I, can, I can research my news and get my news off the Internet, what news there is. That the world out there is insane is not news. That's just the way it is. Do you know? Do you know how I know your your TV's been off for as long as you say it has? I think it's been off since the '60s or '70s because your pop culture references are things like Happy Days. Some people listening to this podcast won't even know that that's a show. Happy Days reruns, really? <laughs> they don't. You don't. You don't tune in and watch to see what the Fonz and the is going to do over at the Cunningham's house. Dad, that show was on before I was born. 
That's Never how long mind. it's been since you've watched TV. <laughs> okay. Well, you, but, you know for a fact that, that we didn't have TV when you were growing up. No, we didn't. And I have to say that you're able to do what you do today, hmm. that your artwork and your ability with art is a direct result of me turning that television off. Yeah, we had a television. It yeah. sat there. And when we turned it on, it was a rare thing. And it was to see something specific. Yeah, but also, I mean, it was great. I had more time to be directed at uh, constructive projects and things. And that was awesome. And looking back now, I'm certainly grateful for it. But at the time, I was like not cool in school at all because I had no idea what was going on because I didn't see the thing. <laughs> so anyway, that's fine. Hey, look, um, you said something to me that, that and, and again, you know, we, we, we talk about this stuff all the time. And I remember was it when I was first launching out into my career as an artist back in the early 2000s, um, there were times where you were talking to me going, hey, look, man, the, the, the going's really good right now. But trust me, the storm's coming. And you would tell me about those times back in the late 80s or that time in the late 80s where the market just went belly up and you went without a sale, you know, for what was it, 18 months or something like that? And so yeah, that- 18 months, I, you know, and, and I, I made sales. Sure. What I didn't make, I made, I made just enough money to keep the business alive. Mm -hmm. I made not, no money that I could pay myself and I had to curtail a lot of the business operations. So if I did make a sale, then I had to look very carefully at how I was going to spend that money. What, with that money, would I be putting gas in the car to travel to a potential show? And then so many of those shows at that time, this was an oil collapse back in the 80s that was just, it just wiped my clientele. It was terrible. Uh, so I had to choose. Did if I if I went to the to the show, and I had several shows where I went, and I made enough money to pay gas and maybe the motel room. And so one of the solutions I had was, yes, I went to the show. I, I did the art show. Uh, and I slept in the car. But that was what I could afford to do. The alternative was don't do it. And, you know, then I made enough money to do it again. <laughs> and, and, that was, and it was terrible. But I also had an a extended period of downtime, enforced downtime, because I simply couldn't afford to go out. Well, I didn't mope around. I spent that time producing new work. So when I when the market did come back and they eventually come back, I had new inventory. I didn't wait for the market to turn back up again. Now maybe you you can call that faith. I had faith it would come back, and if it didn't come back, and I feel the same way about it right now. I'm working on new stuff I'm really excited about, and if the market doesn't come back, you know what? I had a great time doing the artwork. That's what I wanted to do anyway. I do this because I enjoy it. That I happen to make a good living out of it, that's just great. That's wonderful. But the primary thing is I do it because that's what I do. That's who I am. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah, that's... um, It's good, man. I mean, because again, that 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 opportunity that you recognized back there of having that time. It's like, well, there's not a moment to be wasted. And I love that. So by the time it comes back, you show up with brand new stuff. But I think at the meantime, that a crisis like that would cause other people to go straight into a tailspin and they would never recover from it. They would never come back from that. Some of the galleries that close up will never have been, would have never opened again. So mm -hmm. you, you would see this shift in the landscape, so to speak, where the, the people that were really probably had the right idea or the right mindset or attitude are the ones that weathered that storm and the ones that couldn't, didn't. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and unfortunately, a lot of my good clients, uh, they when when their companies went under, they were big companies. I mean, artwork is a luxury item, and it's expensive, and so it's a it's the area where the rich purchase items that are not necessities. And uh, so a lot of my clients, they just simply disappeared from the market and they never returned. I never heard from them or saw them again. Lots of them. I mean, many did. Many weathered the storm, came back. Some of them were hurt. Some of them did better. Some of them, you know, depending on what, what their situation was. But I mean, it was it was phenomenal, and you know there were huge there were, there were big office buildings in Houston, Texas. There were vacant, boarded up. the 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 bottom The bottom floor of glass they come along in straps, plywood all around the outside of the bottom floor to keep the vandals out, and there was nobody in those things, and and that was. That was scary. And at the end of the day, I, I was very fortunate. My wife said, you just keep working on your artwork and as long as I've got a job and income, we'll be fine. And we just weathered it. So what do you, ante let, let's, I know neither one of us has a crystal ball. But if you if you had to come up with some sort of strategy for how you'd be able to come out the other side of this, economically speaking, and, and still keep it going, financially speaking, what would you say would be some strategies that you, Tom Tischler, would employ to ensure that you could still make a sale or you could still have a business of sorts at the end of this? Wow, I'm not sure I can say that. I, I I think that we don't know what's going to happen. It's not that the worst will happen. Your best it's prediction. Simply, this whole thing is an unknown. Sure. And I can't. And I I cannot imagine that some people will not have money uh, at after the war. Some people will will still be in a position to buy that. Whether I have a product that they're interested in buying or not is questionable. I can't. I can't. I don't have a strategy that guarantees my success. Now, I, I, I am well past retirement age already. So, but if I, you know, I have enough other skills that that I can do a whole lot of things if I have to work. I have the I have the skills and the attitude and the the experience to 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 be able to take care of myself some other way. Would I prefer to do my artwork? Well, hell yes. I will always do my artwork whether it's paying or not paying. Because that's how I enjoy that. That's what I enjoy in life. I enjoy animals. I enjoy doing wildlife art, and I I enjoy seeing those animals and nature and that contact with nature. I mean, <clears throat> my art business is a uh, is is a strategy that I developed over time, which allows me to have my contact with the wild animals I love and make a dollar out of it at the same time without exploiting those animals. So I uh, how general I'm I'm sorry I'm just not coming up with a with a solution of what can we do to hunker down. Did you have something in mind there? Yeah. So, well, I got, I got a couple of things come to mind. Sure. Well, how about this? I mean, you, you said just previously that, uh, that you can't imagine that there won't be some people at the end of this with some money. Yes. <clears throat> and I, I, I think there will be some people 
certainly there will be some people here in New Zealand. I think there will be people in the United States. I think there will be people around who have got some money to buy something beautiful that they love in one way or another. Now I think we've been presented with a new set of challenges where it's now like, okay, I need to know how to reach those people. Where are they congregating? Where are they, where are they working? Where are they playing? What's, what's, what, what are they doing? Where can I possibly go to reach them? How can I network smarter? How can I work harder than the other guy to really do my best to make sure that the people with money choose my work over anybody else's? I mean, I, I still think there's going to be some classic universal truths here, despite the changes in the landscape. That's my thinking anyway. Well, I, 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 I think that that's the situation. The question is, <clears throat> how do you develop a strategy if you don't know what that new landscape is going to look like? Uh, so it, it's yeah, a question of keeping, sure. your, of keeping your eyes and your mind open and, and looking for opportunities but there is no way for us to foresee what those opportunities might be. So it's hard to plan in advance. Well, isn't that always the case though? I mean, and this, this again is it's always the case. Yeah. Yes. It's just, this is just, this is just exacerbated. It's just more so. Sure. So um, for instance, uh, you know, I, I've said in the podcast many, many times before that I, I think it's, it's so vitally important that we diversify as artists. We get our, our revenue stream away from one single thing that's coming in and we spread it out so there are multiple revenue streams coming in because when any one of those streams goes, at least you've got three to four others that you can reasonably count on. But now we're facing a situation where you might lose out of five or six revenue streams, you might lose two or three of them you know, overnight or more. or more, but at least you've got something coming in. So it's about using your creativity, maybe not just in your art, but in your business side of things to come up with solutions and answers and try your best to anticipate what's going to happen. But I think, I think what we can do right now, I, I think there are things, you know, despite the fact neither one of us has a crystal ball, okay, granted, I still think there are some creative things that we can do. To, and, and, and there are there are some reasonable things that we can expect. I think that as a result of this crisis, we are going to see some economic downturn. Now, whether that's a full blown recession or depression or whatever, who's to know? But we know for a fact that during the Great Depression of the 1930s, well, certain businesses disappeared, companies collapsed and fell apart, and, and it looked like the world was going to hell in a handbasket. But there were certain industries that did really well, and there were certain businesses that were born out of, you know, the ashes. And, you know, one of those things, for instance, is movies and entertainment booming during the 30s. Everybody was, they could still go and see the movie. And, and there, were, that, that, there was a cultural shift in that particular arena. Now, we might still be in a similar situation where people are out of work, stuck at home, or whatever. They've got a little bit of money, so they might still keep their Netflix subscription. They might still download that movie from iTunes. So I think if you're a digital or a concept artist right now, there might still be opportunities for you in that sort of regard. Now, that's just one example, but we can anticipate, I think, that the economy is going to fold. So how do we, how do we pivot, adapt, and move? Say you've got a high price point item maybe work out a way that you could come up with a lower price point item. If you're doing only one kind of work, maybe you could do another kind of work. If you're just painting, maybe you could run prints, make them cheaper and, and still keep this thing going. And like you said, if you have to survive and get a job, well, it's not the end of the world. Maybe you can do that. Maybe there's something that you can do if you're willing to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And <clears throat> diversification in any business is critical. Now you want to, you may consider it a different business if you change the product, but, but diversification, adaptability, being a generalist instead of a specialist is the key to survival. We can see that from nature. Those things that survive environmental change are those things who have lots of options. So we'll just take one example, bears, for example. Bears have done very well 
because bears don't care what they find, they eat it. But if you're only going to eat a particular plant or you only eat a particular animal and something changes, you're in a very precarious situation. So those that, those that are flexible, that can take, up, take advantage of opportunities, they're more likely to survive. And I think the same applies to us as artists. And, and also, if generally the economy is depressed, if, if cash is short, then much lower priced products are more likely to, to be affordable to greater number of people. So there are two ways you, two ways you can do this. During good times, it's easy to put out a very high priced product and make one or two sales and that's all you need. Remember, with, with art, if your primary purpose is to make money and make lots of money, you're in the wrong business. Yeah, it's true. This is, this is not the way to make lots of money. Make a reasonable living. You make a good living at it. And if you're frugal and keep uh, and and uh, save your money and make wise choices, you can do well in life. But that's difficult. But if you think that you're that this is a get rich quick scheme, you're just delusional. Forget it. So. If you can, if you can switch and say, "Look, I I only need so much to live," and and living includes putting something away for your retirement, and if you're so lucky as to live that long, it'll be upon you before you even know it. And my advice to young people is, start planning for your retirement as soon as you can. the The moment you graduate from high school, you should be planning for your retirement. It happens that fast. But if you can put out something that lots of people can afford and you make a dollar a piece out of a whole lot of these things, it's as good. It's the same amount of money as if you sold one piece and got a lot for it. Well, Dad, I, I've really enjoyed the conversation so far. And, and let's go ahead and end this on a high note. I want to give you the final word. What are some things that we can do here? What are some takeaways, some good old wisdom here from Tom Tischler? Well, I, I, I'm afraid I already said this in the early part of it. This, is, this should be seen as an opportunity. We shouldn't squander this opportunity. Take this time to improve yourself. You're going to need you when we come out the other end of this. You're going to need yourself improved. Take the opportunity to improve yourself. Learn something. At least don't come out the other end as a basket case. If you can focus on something creative, great. If you can learn a new skill, great. If you can, but do something positive. Improve yourself. All this stuff is, I mean, we're just so fortunate to have the internet. We don't have to get up and go to the library. We don't have to, to, to try to find things and other possibilities. We don't have to go buy a book. It's all available mostly for free on the internet. Take advantage of that and improve yourself, but do it in an organized manner. Think ahead, decide what you want to do, decide what you can be, decide how you're going to do it. Be proactive about it. Decide, I'm going to take advantage of this time that has been given to me, and I'm going to come out of this stronger and better on the other side. It doesn't have to be artwork. You can study whatever it is you want to study. Become a better person. There are all kinds of classes and tutorials to take on every subject that you can imagine and a good many that I can't imagine. It's all just available there. Just It's just a click away. 
take advantage of this. Say, wow, this this whole uh, disruption to my life, I'm going to see this as an opportunity. Let's do it. We can come out this, the other side of this, better and stronger than we went in. And it gives us an opportunity to reevaluate our own lives and what we're doing and the possibility of setting a new course. Now, setting a new course is not an option. Your life is going to have be set on a new trajectory. You don't know what that's going to be. The, que- the only thing that you have any control over it is are you going to be prepared for that new direction when the smoke clears? Take this opportunity. Don't waste it. And for God's sake, turn the television off. Wonderful. Well, Dad, thank you so much for being on The Creative Endeavor. I really enjoyed it. Okay. Talk to you later. Well, I hope you enjoyed that last segment of this special edition of the Creative Endeavor podcast. And a huge thank you to my dad, Tom Tischler, for joining me. And again, like my father, with all of these other guests in this special edition of the podcast, you can find links to all of their work in that description down below. Now, we live in really uncertain times. And as an artist, we're going to feel those waves and troughs and dips in the market like any other industry. And we're also gonna feel those challenges on a personal level whenever we're dealing with an international crisis like this. I think the biggest takeaway here for myself, after talking to all of these people, was to focus on the things that I could control. Don't focus on the fear and those things that are outside of our reach, but rather focus on those little things that we can control on a daily basis. If we can reach for a paintbrush and pick it up or a pencil and make a picture, then that's where we should be focusing. Now, the art market and the economy is always going to take a hit when something like this happens. But it's important that we diversify and we look for the things that are going to work and we spread ourselves out in a clever way, in a way where we can make the most of all of the technologies that are available to us. And then that way, we're left with a chance of still having a thriving art career despite whatever challenges the world's going through. It's my hope that in this podcast and the next few podcasts that I'm going to be bringing out, you're going to find some really great information from some top-notch working artists of today of business advice and things that you could plug in directly into your own art career. I really hope that you found this information valuable and helpful in some way. Now, if you like this podcast and you want to see more, then make sure you click that like button for me and leave me a comment down below. As always, if you want to see more of the Creative Endeavor podcast, some of my painting tutorials, or my Sketch Endeavor series, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Click that notification icon so you're notified when I upload another video. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Those links are down below as well. But most important, make sure you're subscribed through my website at andrewtischler.com. Thank you so much for stopping by. I've really enjoyed your company. Keep your chin up and focus on the things you can control. And I'll speak with you again very, very soon.